And welcome to the 72 PC Podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. What's up, fellas? What's up? That's an irk. We have a Tom. We do. Now, guys, I've got, I've got something very important to ask you about right now. Oh, yeah? How do you feel about canned seltzer water? Um, uh, I like it. It's fine. All right. It depends. Different ones are different. Wow, that is the most redundant fucking statement I've different, made. In a while. Uh, different ones Indeed are different. Are yes, different. it is Holy what it shit. is. So this guy is uh, is ginger flavored, which sounded oh, kind of yeah. weird to me until I realized it's literally just sugar free ginger ale. Like it's got no sweeteners in it. It just tastes like ginger ale water. It's delicious and fantastic. And the best part about this one is you pour it in a glass and I went to take my first swig and I was just like, oh, oh, oh God, oh my God. And it does that ginger thing that all good ginger ale does by trying to asphyxiate you. Uh, so yeah, it's good. <laughs> I, I highly recommend this. Yeah, so it, um, you. <laughs> you saying that reminds me of um, the ginger ale lime or ginger lime ice drink I had. Yeah, I, I like ginger with carbonation i think it's really fucking refreshing mm -hmm. same i just know a lot of people don't like the bite i love the bite i live for the bite yeah the, the bite is the only reason i have ginger ale if they can give me ginger ale that will physically injure me while i drink it that's the one i want yeah yeah i mean you you want like to feel like you're getting punched in the face repeatedly while you're taking drinks of it yeah yes. exactly reeds yeah. reeds has a ginger beer in three different levels of ginger strength so they've got regular, yeah. uh, stronger, and strongest. And I live for that strongest. Oh, my God. It's so good. Reed's is so fucking fantastic. It is so good. I love Reed's. I've actually got Reed's over there on the counter to mix with rye. You take some rye whiskey. You take some super spicy ginger ale. And it's this perfect combination of deliciousness. Mm. Easiest thing in the world to make. Just literal, literally... Rye whiskey, ginger ale, you're done. I highly recommend you try it if you are of the legal drinking age in the legal territory in which you currently reside. <laughs> Qualifiers are Qualifiers, yeah. yes. Disclaimers. But yeah. Hashtag mothers against drunk driving. Yes. Drink responsibly. If so you yeah, drink, don't play Rocket League. <laughs> so we're jumping into So Adam, am I rocket... allowed to... Go ahead. I'll say go ahead. I was going to say, am I allowed to ask you what was the delay today? Yeah, so um, so I, I run a fan a lot because it's like 90 degrees in, in uh, Ohio right now, which is very unfortunate. Um, so I have my fan going full blast before the cast. Um, house is small. Mike is sensitive. Fan comes through Mike, all right? So I got to turn yeah. the fan off, and the knob just twists and doesn't actually change the settings on the fan. So I got this fan going oh. full blast. Oh, no. <laughs> and it would have made the podcast significantly worse sounding. So I had to like find a pair of pliers and like turn the knob that like break like take the knob off and then turn the the actual the stem. Uh, dial with a with a pair That's of pliers. That's awesome. So needle nose pliers coming in clutch today. This broadcast to you. This broadcast brought to you by Black and Decker or whatever brand the tool is. <laughs> brought to you by a Craftsman. Yes. Whenever you got to turn that fucking fan off, use a Craftsman. Yeah. And it sucks too because it's already getting hot in here. So I'm gonna be like oh. doused in sweat by the end of this episode. <laughs> so, uh, so you'll be looking kind of like Sam Porter Bridges. If you see me gl glistening and crying, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Sam Porter Bridges? Uh, oh, the, we will, it's Norman we will Reedus' character in Death Stranding, which we'll get to later. Okay. okay. Yeah. We don't need to we'll get to we'll that right away. That. Well, we do need to get to right away. I watched a movie last night, fellas. Oh, what'd you watch? And I was pleasantly surprised. Oh, Sonic. Oh, you watched Dude, a Sonic that movie. A, All that's right. That's a solid fucking movie. Okay. I mean, I'm that's not going to say, like, oh my God, it's great, but yeah. if you go into it expecting nothing, I mean, that, don't, that sounds wrong. I'm going to backtrack everything I was saying right there. Okay. It's fun. It's a fun fucking movie. It's a slosh of just silliness, but it is fun. It is good. If you go into it not expecting like some like film festival esque kind of movie, right. you're gonna enjoy it. It's not so like, like all right, top movies of all game. time: Shawshank Redemption, Schindler's List, 
uh, Sonic. whatever else. <laughs> Sonic, Sonic, <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog. 20, no, it, it was actually really enjoyable. That came in 2019, uh, right? Pretty sure it's 2019. The end of. But yeah, it, it was. If you haven't seen it, see it. There's um, sure. they have some good Easter eggs in it. Um, so they. I don't think this is it has nothing to do with story. Um, it's Robotnik. Yeah, it's it's an American made movie. They call him Robotnik. They make reference to Eggman, which oh, is cool. kind of fun. That's kind of <laughs> neat. Um, they do something like Sonic falls and he drops something and he has to pick them up because they're bouncing like they would in the game. Well, I mean, not like they would, but in a similar, in the vein of kind of thing. An IRL kind of feel for it. Yeah, it was, it was fun. They did me, the, um, you know, when you leave, go AFK and he just does the toe tap bullshit. Mm-hmm. while yeah. he's waiting there's a part wherever he's doing that and it's just like oh i like these kind of easter eggs yeah it's little nods to the game dobby is saying it was 2020 oh so it was earlier this year okay god this year feels like five <laughs> yeah kind of like like kinda like does. five ad i would agree <laughs> well it no, feels like our health system right. five bc <laughs> actually <laughs> yeah five bc sounds about better um, no, um, it was good. Go see it. No, I don't know no, if I'll that, pay full price, but go see it. I was going to say, is that like an instant, like, buy it right now on various digital platforms and own it forever, or do the, like, $3 rental thing? Do a $3 rental thing. Okay. Like, so I, not something I have... you'll ever go back to, but decent for, for a romp? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. I, I saw it for free, so I felt very fulfilled. So Had I paid free. $20... Well, I think I would feel bad for buying most things for twenty bucks because I don't rewatch a lot of movies. It's it's a very small amount. We gotta hydrate there, fellas. Yep. Just did. Stay hydrated. Epoch I plays am. with the hydrate. I'm so hydrated right now. You guys have no idea. Oh my god. It's a uh I have a peach IPA. Can't remember the exact manufacturer. Um and the first time I had it, Gina hates them. And I smelt this, I took a drink of them, like, okay, taste this. I'm like, you're gonna love it to start with, and then you're gonna hate it. <laughs> Because on the front end, it punches you with like a peach wheat type of ta- flavor. Like a with, super sweet beer sort of thing? Yeah, like a, like a uh, mango, uh, the mango blue moon kind of flavor. Yeah. And then it settles into an IPA. Oh, and like her face goes, like, oh, this is it. good. And then it's like, oh, oh wait, no, this yeah, isn't no. good. <laughs> I fucking hate IPA. I really oh, I fucking do. hate you. Beer is not supposed to be just like hops. It's supposed to be more than just hops. If I wanted hops, I'd have hop juice. That's all IPAs are. They're just hop juice. So I, have we talked about this on the cast, the idea of acquired taste and why the fuck people do it? Uh, maybe. Like, so I, I put it in the same line as beer. IPAs. I didn't like them at first. I found one that I tolerated, and I eventually turned to liking them. I don't know. It's kind of like... um beer no one likes beer at first and you just keep drinking it and then eventually you like it coffee i don't another, know why the fuck is another one like that yeah well, i mean why the uh, fuck would you put yourself through that knowing you don't like it just to force yourself to eventually like it I don't one know. of my favorite memes is uh some guy that said hey i can drink fuzzy girl like fuzzy navels and girly drinks man yeah i'm gonna taste or drink something that tastes like peaches that's gonna get me fucked up in a half a drink and you can have your 5% carbonated bread there, Brad. <laughs> you know, can't disagree with that. Like, yeah. do what you want. If you like it, if you want it tasty, go for it. Don't don't get judged. So on the acquired thing, acquired <sighs> taste thing in general, um, I mean, I kind of get it. Uh, I, I do the same thing with, like, music and stuff, too, where you might not like it at first, but it is interesting because it's different than whatever you've experienced before. And then yes. you, you keep experiencing it because it's interesting, even though you don't necessarily like it. And then you ev- eventually learn to appreciate what you do like about it. That's kind of how I view that. This actually plays like, into something. Um, oh, go ahead. No, go. that was pretty much done. <laughs> um, this plays into something that I was actually going to bring up tonight. Uh, so I hate wine. I loathe wine. It, it tastes like fucking spoiled fucking grape juice, which... It is. 
kind of um but like i never found a wine that i really liked like i've had really good wine i've gone to like with people to do wine tastings and the only thing i like is always like moscato or the super sweet dessert wines and i am happy to say um i have discovered port it is absolutely a sweet dessert wine. It tastes like expensive grape juice, and it's delicious. So I have found that with wine, there is no correlation to price to flavor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I've had expensive I've bottles that, that are fucking <laughs> trash. And yeah. I've had like the, I mean, still not a cheap bottle, but like a, it's not an expensive bottle. But I mean, it's like a $10 bottle. It's like, this is perfect. Yeah. It's like yeah, there is so- no correlation to price to flavor. We uh, we picked up uh, a couple bottles of port for me because I'm I'm trying to expand my wine palette to you know not just be that that guy that can't have a glass of wine because he doesn't know what he likes. Um, and it's good, it's good, it's super sweet. Like if if you do not like sweet wines, if you like you know the dry stuff, you are probably not going to agree with port. Um, but it's fantastic. It's got like. Um, a sweet sort of vanilla ish taste to it in some ways. It's, um, huh. I'm trying to think of exactly what it tastes like, but there's like an actual liquor taste, kind of like a brandy, I want to say, to this wine. Hmm. So you get like the super, super sweet liquor taste with it as well. Well, when you were saying vanilla, first thing that comes to mind is like a rum cask. Yeah. But, um, Dave's calling out to try Fuki wine if you like uh, sweet dessert types. No clue what that is. Mine. But yeah, I've, I don't, I got to be careful I say this. I don't dislike wine. I'm just not a wine guy. Like there's yeah. some that I think, yeah, they're fine. And every once in a while I'll be like, yeah, that's good. But I don't care to drink wine. Why do you have to be careful about how you say that? That's not a, I don't, well, that's because a very touchy I have, subject. <laughs> no, it's... I, my personal view is on something with that diverse of flavor is saying I don't like wine is just saying I don't oh, want yeah. to put in the effort I don't to like see if there's syrup. any okay. wine. Yeah, I get you. I don't like liquids. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> it's like I'm sure that there is a wine out there that you would enjoy. Yeah. It's just like, whether or not you ever try it or whether or not you're willing to get to that point. Like, I am sure there are Brussels sprouts out there that I will tolerate. I have not had every single kind. But everything I have had so far, I'm not impressed with. Well, but I mean, like Brussels sprouts are Brussels sprouts. You're just seasoning them differently. Like there's literally different brands or different types of wine. Yeah. I think cereal is a good comparison. Saying like, I don't like cereal. Yeah, like, you, you oh, tried Lucky how? Charms once and you're like, I don't like cereal. It's like, how can oh, you well, possibly yeah, but... not like cereal? <laughs> what? Oh, fucker, what? have you ever had grape nuts? Dude, fucking... um. Oh my god! I just blanked on the old. I don't mind person. grape nuts. I like grape nuts. Uh, honey, honey bunches of oats. Fuck yeah! Yeah, they make that frosted. Is a solid classic. They make frosted honey bunches of oats now. Really? Yeah. It wasn't sweet enough as it was. It wasn't enough fruit it wasn't, on it as it, it was. It wasn't sweet as it wasn't as sweet as frosted flakes. To begin, I know. With. I was just uh, playing on the Bill Burr skit. Speaking of which, they also have uh, frosted flakes with marshmallows. Like the Lucky Charms marshmallows? I don't okay. like Lucky Charms marshmallows. Oh, I love it's those It's because things. you're a communist. I, mean, I, think Lucky, okay. I think Lucky Charms is the most overrated cereal out there, I which is devastating underrated. because it's Gina's favorite. I think it's I underrated. Will, I will agree that it is overrated because Lucky Charms should really just be marshmallows. Like, what is that fucking gray excuse for cereal in that shit? No, it's the contrast. It's important. I don't That's need the point. contrast. I need marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> Those things are bad, but the marshmallows aren't much better. I love the marshmallows because they've, it's always like, it's got the, this is going to sound weird. It's got like the hard staleness of the marshmallow and it just kind of sticks around after you finish it. Okay. You are I calling out that. bad characteristics as food as being the best characteristics. I love it. I really do. Now, yeah. now, to like, to try to balance myself out a little bit, you know, one bad characteristic about food is it being moldy, and some crazy people actually like blue cheese. So love blue cheese. I'm going to defend me liking a stale marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave's calling out something I've seen and never tried that I have no doubt I would love. Chocolate Frosted Flakes. Chocolate cereal is just uh, fucking good. The after milk. 
is the best part of almost any chocolate it's, cereal. It's perfect. It's the best chocolate milk you could have. Like, uh, okay, what's agree. better milk oh. afterwards? Reese Puffs or Cocoa Puffs? Neither. Cocoa Puffs. Hold on, hold on. Yes, Adam, I, I'm not a chocolate cereal guy. I don't, I don't care for chocolate cereal too much. Even Reese Puffs with that contrast of peanut butter and chocolate? Yeah, it's okay. It's I think they're overrated. Candy. It's but they're overrated for me. Cereal. I don't care about Reese's Puffs at all. I'm sorry. Do you guys have a preference for <laughs> Gets like quiet? Non-tweet? I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> I, was like, How do I, do this for I just don't like chocolate awesome. cereal that much. I like this chocolate. This has been the, the podcast. Thanks for joining me. I in. love chocolate milk. I just don't care about the cereal. I remember being a kid, like I, at this point, like I like Rice Krispies plain. I like cornflakes plain. Mm-hmm. But as a kid, you know, I can't be bothered with non sugar cereal. So we would have a sugar bowl on the table. Hmm. And you would pour sugar onto your cornflakes and rice. I used Krispies to do treats. that when I was a kid. Too. Yeah, I still okay. do that. <laughs> okay, so we I, we weren't weird. That that's commonplace, or at least you uh, guys. Yeah, I think it. so. It yeah. was when I was a kid. Yeah, go to uh, grandparents' I don't, house. I know if it was, have regular Cheerios how... with like an unacceptable amount of sugar added on top. Yeah, I've never done. And it then with at Cheerios. the end. And at the end of the bowl, you get that milk, and then like the sugar wasn't dissolved all the way, so you've got like bumps of sugar in the bottom that you scoop up with your spoon. That was the best thing. For me, it was on the uh, the frosted or the cornflakes. So you'd every once in a while get one flake that was just loaded with sugar. Oh, it's kind of like getting that tortilla chip at Chipotle that's loaded with salt. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, so extra salty, extra limey chip. Yeah. Yeah. Or the Dorito towards the bottom of the bag that has just way too much MSG cheese coating on it. Um, I got I got a Chipotle chip that was weird as hell. It looked like they they had stacked up all the tortillas and then were you know like cutting them to make the chips. Mm-hmm. Except that mine were all stuck together. Like I literally had a chip that was this thick from Chipotle, Ooh. and it it wasn't mm. great. But it was weird and interesting, and I was okay with it. Huh. Yeah. Just let you know, those things can happen. Yeah. Thick chips. Thick I, chips. I, the best Doritos ever put out were the jacked variants. They were like the extra thick. Jacked. They were like two to three times che- uh, thicker than standard Doritos. Doritos and they jacked. Made ex- they made exceptional breading on things. Oh. Ooh. Oh, so good. I didn't think about that aspect um, of it. You guys want to back out so maybe we can get some other people in here? Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. Snipe our lobbies. Um, you know the drills. You know the so drill. I did do a new food thing. I've never done all oh, two new food things at once. And I think I paid the price for doing two unknowns at once. So last Sunday, we went to the grocery. And we got two steaks, two nice ribeyes. And I put them on a rack. I salted them and threw them in the fridge until Friday. So I let them kind of dry age almost a week in the fridge with some salt on them. So the way they came out looking was great. So then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to reverse sear these bitches. So put it in there, 225. And I have never done reverse searing before. So I pull them out at about 139. Well, I was trying to get medium rare. So I'm like, okay, maybe it'll raise like four or five degrees during searing. These damn things raise like 20 degrees during searing. Oh, so yeah, I goofed well it done up. Steaks. Yeah. An entire week's worth of waiting and patience Damn. gone out the window. Uh, that sucks. I've but absolutely I've, done that before. Not with the I, weak aging, though. So it was interesting because um, I don't mean this in a bad way because I think it's actually a pretty good flavor. There was like a hint of uh, beef jerky-ish kind of flavor in, this, in it, especially oh, on the okay. outer edges. Assuming that's from the dry aging? Yeah, I think it's supposed to, from what I've heard is like the dry aging is supposed to help amplify the flavor of the beef. So like your outer edges will get a little drier and shrinkage, but like the center will be more intense flavor. Like typically they'll dry for like 30 days. You'll get so much like culture growth on the outside that they'll like shave off the outer skin. Uh. It's it's really interesting if you've never seen it, but yeah, it, it turned out okay. And I'm also finding I don't like ribeyes. Really? Ribeyes are I, I, amazing. There's a lot of fat on the outside. I don't like that fat cap. 
I'm, I'm really particular to my sirloins. I know it's a lean, cheaper steak. I like those. I need to find me a nice steak that'll get some marbling in it, though. That's New York Strip. Life. New York Strip is <laughs> is my go-to. I think They're I might a little have tried the strip. But... I, I mean, I know ribeyes are supposed to be a good cut. Mm. I just... I don't know. I may try it one more time. New York Strip is the best. Dobby's calling out. Like, I know the fillets are great, but... And Ooh. also, another thing I have to do, I have to go to an actual butcher, so I need to get a thicker cut. Okay, so I've got a, I've got a steak question for you guys. Steak question. You can get, you can get a filet. That's like the best fucking steak you've ever had in your entire life. It'll change your entire fucking world. But it's like that big. Yeah. <laughs> would, would you rather have like a solid steak with some heft, or the filet but not as much? And for me. I'm always a quantity over quality kind of guy. I'm not sure if you know that from the everything about me. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm always going to go with that ribeye or that New York strip or whatever the, the big ass steak is over the filet. Even though I know the filet is better technically, oh, I just want more. If you're going to do that, go sirloin, man. Sirloin's cheap and it's great. It's a lean cut. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's true. But, um, you know, I was always that. Like sirloin's my go-to when I go to a steak place. I'll always get a sirloin. I'm that said, eye. man, I've had, really. I've had filet once. It's good. Oh, buddy. It's good. That filet is, is tender. Incredible. I, this is going to sound weird. I'm one of those guys. I'd rather not know what I'm missing because damn, <laughs> that thing's good. It, it does ruin steak a lot. Like once you've had great steak, like going back and especially trying to cook the stuff at home. Like if you go to a fancy steak restaurant, and then you make steaks at home next week. You're just, you're not happy. No, it's, no, I actually. It's never going to get there. I feel that, I mean, I'm not talking like $200 steakhouse kind of thing. But like yeah. where I go, like I can outdo those steaks. See, I can't, but I'm also bad at things. <laughs> Solid point. Can't. <laughs> I, I, just I know my time. limit. I, I, make a, I make a solid steak, but it's not uh, solid steak. But it's not exactly the it's better than liquid know, steak. greatest thing. Yeah, liquid steak, a little weird, a uh, little more on the rare side. I prefer milk steak. Well, yeah. Now, do you have your jelly beans on the milk steak or off yes. the oh, side? No, on for sure. Fuck you guys. Definitely on. Yeah. On, it just, it makes that. Like, you get the chewiness of the jelly bean, then the nice chewiness of the meat because it's been, you know, boiled in milk and it's palette in color and just how I like it. <laughs> So I'm blanking, but um, it's not milk, but um, something else with a milk name, um, buttermilk. That's actually a good thing to um, I don't want to say marinate, but it's effectively marinate the steak in. Oh yeah, it'll help uh, tenderize it. So you mock the milk thing, but buttermilk is actually good to soak your steak in before cooking. Fair enough. We should uh, we should try to make milk steak. Do it for science. Yeah, yeah, binging with Babish has that covered already. Yeah. Oh no, that was um. Was that milk? Yeah, it was milk steak. Somebody I'm thinking rum ham instead. He did that too. He did yeah, like yeah. A, an always sunny episode where he did drinks and because uh, he did fucking show. fight milk. Oh. He did fight milk and he did uh, <laughs> whale legs. Oh man, fight milk. I, I did not try fight milk, uh, but we did try riot punch. Riot punch. That's what I was trying to think of. Even Babish's version of riot punch was not good. <laughs> it was not good. It's not at supposed all. to be good. It's supposed to get you tanked. Uh, it did that. I was well, not happy afterwards, though. It's like vodka and Gatorade. You're not doing it because it's going to no, taste good. No. You're, You're just doing it to slightly water down that vodka. You and wish for the it electrolytes. Was it was uh, it was grain alcohol, so it's ever clear in Gatorade. Ah, true. Oh, that worked. Sweet. Uh, Chewy's calling out that his dad used to do something to uh, put a rubber flavor in the steaks. Um, I would say that you probably don't want to eat that. Awful. That is awful. Um, make sure you're cooking on charcoals, not um, like the rubber tires. things that you put in playgrounds or tires. Yeah. Like a tire fire is probably not something you should be cooking over. <laughs> no, Pro propane, 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 propane all the way. Taste, taste, the, uh, taste the meat, not the heat. Okay, hang I don't like <laughs> charcoal. I don't Wait, really? like the flavor. I don't like the taste. I don't like the smell. Propane all the way. Well, hold on. When you say charcoal, though, like you're thinking uh, just like the generic ass charcoal. 
Yeah. Thanks for it, baby. Like, not not what not lump wood that people will use. No, no, I'm referring to the the very act of charcoal grill versus propane grill. I vastly prefer prefer propane. I don't want to taste the the fucking coals, which is the only thing I taste when I have charcoal anything. Is I just taste the coal flavor, and that's not what I want. Like I can lick those ever, bricks. I don't want to. Have you ever done um like the lump coal, like it's actual wood? Um, and, and you no. cook it just like you would charcoal, but it's actual wood. No. That's how when we was in Ohio, uh, my buddy did the grilling that way. It turned out really nice. Because then you can also then uh, put like his he has one of those egg grills. You can put a cast iron in the bottom of it over the wood to prevent the direct heat and actually cause it to be a smoker. So like okay. it actually has smoking type of effects when you're using that rather than just straight charcoal. Hmm. That's so nice. call out to anyone with charcoal grills. Try not using actual lump coal and just use actual the wood. Yeah, you, you, you'll like what you'll get. Fair enough. Let's back out again. But anyway, fellas. Yeah. Games? Games? Uh, oh, games. Games. Eli's had a really good call out there I missed real quick. The polymer stick. The polymer stick. For that stick. rubber. The rubber stick. But, uh, um. So I played more Beat Saber. I played like two and a half hours last night with Bird and Smiggle. We were doing more Beat Saber multiplayer, uh, which was fun. Ah. Yeah, you gotta, you God. gotta get in this. No, two no, and guys. Two hours that- last night. Full disclosure to audio audience, we've been trying to avoid these dudes in game and we keep queuing into them because we got people that are probably trying to snipe and they can't because we keep getting these guys. No offense to these I'm guys, gonna, by the way. Yeah, no, no offense to like, these guys. They seem like nice, chill guys. Yeah. But we're trying to open the up the lobby good, but... so other people can snipe. <laughs> um, we'll chill for a second. So, uh, so uh, multiplayer beat saber, how does that work exactly? I know you explained it before but can you remind me yeah yeah so um you you create a lobby um you know optionally with the password people jump in when you select a song what the uh the person's client does is it says oh hey here's this song um do you have it okay you don't cool what's the key and then it will actually download the song on their machine so the good news is that you can quite easily build massive libraries of, of songs for your friends uh, just by going through the menu and clicking stuff that you think they should have, because it'll download. The bad thing is that if one of those songs got taken down or was deleted for whatever reason, usually DMCA type stuff, uh, is that when you click on the song in your library, because you still have a copy, it goes to download it on Beat Saver and it doesn't exist, so it freezes up and then you have to recreate the room. Um, definitely a, a little bit of an oversight. I've thought about going and fixing it. The code's all open source, which is nice, um, but. Yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. So after you pick a song, it quite literally drops you all in the same room. And if you look to your left and right, you can see your your compatriots. So like looking over to the right, I saw I saw Bird over here, and I saw Smiggle a little further down. And you can actually see the arrows fly towards them. So it just lines you up, and then you play it all at the same time. Huh? It's really cool. It's really easy to get going, Uh, and I am super thrilled with it so far still kind of a buggy mess but hey it's a free mod on a game that wasn't supposed to have multiplayer in the first place it's a miracle it works at all so i'm trying to get together some um jackbox after the cast that said if that falls through you're going to get me all these mods so i can yes we are going to do that i have pinned a message in the 72 pin connector discord general chat so if you would like to see my list of mods Go ahead and click the pin messages in general chat after you join the 72 pin connector discord and it'll hook you right up. Plus, your mod setup, your mod setup is really nice. I really like my setup. I've, I've taken a very long time trying to perfect that. Uh, well, games, fellas. Anyone else got some fresh blood? So I don't think I actually I have, have fresh blood. I have stories. I don't have any fresh, no fresh games. Blood. I actually have two fresh games, which oh. is uh, not char- characteristic of me at all. Yeah. Um. So I'll talk about the shorter one first. Journey. Uh, Journey was a PS3 exclusive a long time ago, I believe, and it is finally out on like PC, 
Uh, it was on the Epic Game Store, I think, too, and it had a Steam release fairly recently, uh, maybe a month ago or something. Um, it's a third-person adventure chill game. It is the ultimate chill-out game. Ooh. Um, basically, mm. it's kind of... Uh, hmm, I'm trying to think of what other games I can compare it to. I don't want to say Gree because you're going to get the wrong idea. But... Um, <laughs> Lies in the chat. Journey is an American rock Journey's band that American formed in San band. Francisco in 1973, composed of former members of Santana and. Oh my God! Okay, no, no, Delaz. Absolutely not. Um, but I no, it's a super chill third-person game. Um, there's like there's no dialogue whatsoever. Um, you just you start off and you're this character in this desert. Um, you've got a cool little robe on and a nice little scarf, and it shows this mountain in the distance with a big glowing light on the top of it. And that's where you have to go. That's your journey. And you progress through these areas. Um, some very, very light puzzling. Not a lot of challenging gameplay. Like, it's really chill. I don't want to say walking simulator, but it's definitely somewhere within that vein. Um, it's like a platforming walking simulator. Yeah, like, there, yeah. there's gameplay to but it. There's more, sure. Yeah, there's more to it than what you would normally associate when somebody just says, oh, yeah, it's a walking simulator. Yeah. Like, there's more to it than that. Um, absolutely gorgeous game. I love just being in that world. Um, but the coolest That's part totally about Journey is the multiplayer. So I went into this game pretty much blind. I don't know how I avoided as much of it as I did. Um, but I knew there was vaguely a multiplayer aspect. I didn't know what it was. So I'm playing the game, and all of a sudden I get to this part, and there's another guy. He looks just like me. And he's kind of following me around, and uh, when I jump, he jumps. And you know, you can kind of... You can sort of tie your abilities together. Like you have this jump that you can use to fly for a short amount of time and kind of float around. Um, and that gets recharged by being close to your companion in multiplayer. So like being right next to the other player, it'll charge up your jump thing. Or um, you can use what's called chime, which is like a, basically you hit the button and it makes a noise. And it's like the only way you can communicate with that person. So there's no text chat, there's no voice chat. Um, it's basically the only multiplayer game I can think of that it's impossible to grief. You can't do anything negative to your your companion. Huh. Um, so yeah, you can you communicate in just these uh, these little chimes, and then you can charge each other's scarf with like a charged chime thing. But yeah, it's super cool because you're just you're going through these areas, and all of a sudden there's another guy, and that's your buddy for that part, and you know you're not alone in your journey or whatever. And I'm sure that that's part of the artistic point of it but you communicate with these little chimes it's like a you know hey there's a, a little charge power up thing over here there's collectibles and you might be We're... going through and your buddy is like hey check this out you didn't know about this here and you go and you say thanks with like a little double chime and i don't know it's just cool were there any wheels in the sky that kept on turning yeah for sure yeah okay God, I, I did not God. stop believing at all <laughs> Okay. Quit I was, it. I was all in. <laughs> don't feed Eric, into listen, the Eric, bull If you don't want to play, if you don't want to play it, we can go our separate ways. But <laughs> no, we had to go our separate ways. Then I said, "Hey, motherfucker, who's crying now?" Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. This is why I do this. Yeah. But no. So the so game you... is only like an hour, like two hours long, maybe. Like it's really short. Um. But you can play through it multiple times with different people. And one of my favorite things is at the very end, after the credits, it says companions companions you met along the way. And it shows the names of the players that you encountered in your playthrough. That's pretty cool. That's cool. So um, so I, I went through the first playthrough. Uh, the ending segment was absolutely beautiful and triumphant. And it just made me smile. Like, it's just one of those positive games. There's nothing. It's not like one of those overly sad, depressing you know, indie games that you're used to. It's kind of more positive than that. Um, so I actually played through a second time immediately after I realized how the multiplayer worked. Because the first the first person I ran into, I wasn't sure if it was AI or a person. And then I, oh. I, I went through the whole thing and realized, oh, wait a minute. No, those are actually all real people. It showed the com companions right at the end. So I went through again um, until I got to somebody and they acted completely different than some of the other people I ran into before. Um, they were kind of doing That's their own thing. Cool. And he would point out to me, a, a 
collectible I, I missed, so I went over there and thanked him. Uh, there's a there was a point I stopped to go to the bathroom. So you can make your if you pause the game, your character just kind of sits there. He sits down on the ground. So I went to the bathroom or whatever, got a drink, came back, and the dude was still chilling there waiting for me. Like it was cool. There's just like that cool That's sense cool. of uh, I don't know. You got a friend on your way to on the way to the top of the mountain. One of my favorite parts uh, about Journey is how. It, it doesn't like beat you over the head with that. Like there's no instruction that says, Hey, play through a second time and go help your other friends. Uh -huh. Like it doesn't do any of this shit, but the gameplay itself and that reveal drives you to just play through again. Let's go through. Let's see what we missed. Let's see who we can help now. Let's, uh, you know, let's be cooperative. And it's, it's honestly one of the few games that I've seen that doesn't give explicit directions, but through the design itself, it makes you do exactly what the designers wanted you to do and learn the lessons that the designers exactly wanted you to learn. It's really cool. It's, it's quite literally a masterclass in game design subtlety and how to control player behavior. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, fantastic pickup. I would highly recommend it. Perfect chill out game on a Sunday morning, Eric, or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to call this out. You're saying that's a perfect chill game. Yep. I, I'm going to one-up you. I played a chill game that I haven't played in a while. I don't know if I've talked about it on the cast before. Super Flight. This game is the ultimate fucking chill out. There's really not much to it. It's procedurally generated. You're a dude in a wingsuit, and you're just flying around these obstacles and stuff going down. Once you reach the bottom, it automatically loads you into the top of the next procedurally generated area. Oh. The closer you fly to things, the more points you get. As soon as you hit something, you die and you restart. And it's just constant going. It is the color palette is that of a mix between No Man's Sky and um, uh, Risk of Rain. It is just so, like put on some chill ass music and just fall through the fucking sky, man. <laughs> that shit is just super chill. Sounds relaxing for sure. Huh. But you want to know what's not chill? Something Dave just called out. You guys see the new No Man's Sky update? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you mean the, uh, uh, No Man's Dead Space? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what it made me think of. Like that? That shit's going to be... I, mean, it's gonna, I need to load back in. There's been so much stuff done to that game since I've last played. Oh, fuck. I'm going to have to do that shit in VR. Oh, fuck. Dude, that would be nutty. Actually, I debated on loading up into VR into it last night. Hey, if you want to do it, let me know. We'll go do it. Because it's just... Have you done it yet, Dave? There's a There's been a bunch. Yeah, there has been a bunch of updates. I've just been super tempted to get back into it. But I'm trying to actually get better at Rocket League. So there's only so much time in the day. It's fishing season, and I want to get better at Rocket League. I don't know that right do there is pretty much all-consuming for any free time I would have by myself. So it might have to wait a little bit. And by the time I get to it, what? There might be like three other new games added to it. <laughs> by the way that they're fucking running that game. Exactly. So um, so I played what is by far my favorite strand type game. <laughs> um, and that was Tarkov. We played a lot of Tarkov today, Eric. It was a, lot yeah. of, it was a good time. Your, your, bet, your favorite what type game? Strand, strand type, type game. It's a strand type game. Sure. Did you not see the mar the marketing of Death Stranding a long time ago? No. He mentioned, you know, it's the it's, it's it's the first strand, type, strand game. type game. And everybody's like, okay, whatever. What does that mean? Hello? And he's oh, like, yeah, it's a strand type <laughs> game. You, you I, I miss it? a lot of marketing anymore <laughs> since I don't have TV and shit. You get it? Like strand? Like the Death Stranding? Like, like Shut up. Stranding? Yeah. Like, I get it. It's the name of the game. It's just not good. But no, um, we did play a lot of Tarkov today, and I played a lot this week. Like I got from level six to ten on Tuesday. I was surprised to see how much you've been grinding it out. Yeah, I'm. I've really grinded it out. I've got the cases. I don't have an economy, but my, I now I'm in a spot where I have room to live, because I have enough cases to be able to not clutter the shit out of my inventory, which is such a good feeling to finally be there. I got there a lot quicker than I did last wipe. I can tell you that. Yeah. 
he know what to do now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's oh, been Scott, fun. Scott's two two K experience from level ten. Nice. That's when the game opens up. You're like one quest away, basically. And that's been the fun thing for me is like last wipe, I was the noob. I didn't know anything. And this wipe, we're playing with Scott a lot and he's brand new. So it's been fun to see how he approaches things mm -hmm. because like the, I'm not a huge meta guy. So to me, there's not like a right and wrong necessarily. So I like seeing how other people attack things. And um, I guess we can hit on this real quick. Um, there's big some pretty big news on the Tarkov front as well. Um, there's going to be a new gun, a grenade launcher that a lot of people are hesitant about. I'm worried about that for sure. That seems like that could very easily be OP. I think just but grenades they're... that are throwable are already a little annoying sometimes. <laughs> Let alone being able to shoot them with pinpoint yeah. accuracy. Yeah. I don't know about like that. They've, we'll see. They're going to have to make that to where it's not perfectly accurate. Otherwise, that's just going to be too deadly of a weapon. Yeah. Well, they'll introduce it. I'm sure there will be a ma massive backlash of some sort, and they'll make some changes along the way. I mean, Tarkov is always changing. Well, it's, you know, it's called beta, but it's more great. of an alpha. And their their devs are very responsive. Um, they'll do things for a reason. Like, initially, they put the market to level 15 to stop real-world trading. People outcried, hey, that's too high of a fucking level. So they mm -hmm. dipped it down to 10. Yeah. But um, yeah, so new gun and the map that probably everyone knows the best, Customs, is getting an expansion. I'm excited so, for um, the expansion, man. Anyone who knows Customs knows that there tends to be a choke points in a way where Multiple you have to go. Points. Yeah. Well, there's a one big one where you have to go to the north side of the map to get to the west to east. You have to go somewhere near gas station or you have to go all the way north of gas station. Mm -hmm. Now they're adding a path to the south, the far south. So there's now going to be two very big different ways to get across the map, which is huge. Because there's no longer just going to be these kind of, you know that PMCs have to come across here. You're not mm -hmm. going to have those points. Yeah. I wonder if it's going to make it more or less PVP focused. I don't know. Depends on know. how the expansion is, I guess, specifically. Like, this I know at, be at the beginning, everybody's going to be checking out the new areas. So you're going to be running yeah. into people left and right. And this might be blasphemous. I think getting customs to not as be as PvP-centric would be a good thing because it's easier on new players that way. Yeah. Like, let the PvP stuff like go to factory and reserve. And have customs be more of like the new ground. There's some games I really like how they do it, where like if you're over a certain level, you can't load into maps oh. to give that safe space to players. Like uh, Mag, Mag had a uh, intro level like that. Yeah, I don't. Mm. I wouldn't want Tarkov to limit maps though, based on level. I don't. I, that's what I'm saying. I would like it to be more of a natural thing where the map becomes less PvP centric because there's too many routing options or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll definitely be excited to see how it plays out for sure. Yeah, and Scott calls out an issue that he's had is like crossing the river always sucks. There's a couple choke points and also all the all the quest spots. Yeah. So what doesn't help though is all the quest spots are the already dorms. in high. Uh, the yeah. dorms. You're in dorms or you're in construction, which you, typical typical traversal of the map you either go by dorms or you go through construction you do one or the other typically mm -hmm. so i mean just the nature of the flow through the map where they drop those quest points make some hot spots but yeah i'm i'm really digging it i feel i'm actually last wipe i was playing the game this wipe i'm actually learning it like, I'm figuring out how to play with the guns better. I'm figuring out how to anticipate people's movements through the maps better. Mm -hmm. I'm learning where the crates are on certain maps to make high-value uh, high runs out of scavs without even running into a person. So it's it's been really, really, really helpful. Yeah, that, that, uh, that's it's nice for sure. I'm glad that they do that whole wipe everybody's progress cycle thing for now. What's up, Omni? We're yeah. talking about uh, Escape from Tarkov. 
Yeah, thank you, Adam, for giving it the full name. Tom and I are jackasses. Just say Tarkov. Tarkov, Tarkov, Tarkov. Assuming everyone knows what Tarkov is. Tarkov, Tarkov. I mean, Tarkov. if you search Tarkov in Google, it's going to come up with Escape from Tarkov. Yeah. Is that it similar to um, Rust? I've, I haven't played Rust, but it looks interesting. Rust. Yeah. So Tarkov, Tarkov is weird. Tarkov is like a roguelike, persistent world MMO trading post hyper realistic. Shooter shooter sneaking Perfect. stealth game with pvp and pve elements <laughs> like i heard it's lines. like your know. base is always there on the server even when you're not so people can like raid and fuck up your base uh, for <laughs> rust yeah yeah he says yeah that's a lot like rust <laughs> but where Fair rust enough. is a lot more freeform tarkov it definitely has like through and through quest lines like hey do this thing Gather this gear, turn it into this thing, exit well, through this portal. Even each yeah, each run is you're starting here, get here. Yeah. You have 30 minutes to do it, or we're calling you MIA. Yeah, it's not it's not like an open world, but it has open world elements sometimes with the spawn system and then continuous spawn into a raid halfway through but it's sort of Battle Royale-ish. Like, honestly, Tarkov evades every classical, like, genre pinning we could give to it. It's like a combination of a whole lot of different game archetypes mm -hmm. in a way that really, really works well. Yeah, I'm surprised it, it works as well as it does. The only thing that you can call it confidently is it is, in fact, a first-person shooter. Yes, for yeah, sure. That's about the only thing. <laughs> But it's, yeah, like, it's weird as hell. I would highly recommend uh, checking out on Twitch, watching YouTube videos, or even mm. just picking the game up if you've got money to spare. Because uh, it is absolutely unique compared to literally everything else you have played before. It's, it's also and a it's, lot. It's a lot it, to learn. It's a lot to take in. There's, yeah. Um, huge erection, I think I called out last time. It's like drinking from a fucking fire hose. There's yeah. so much information thrown at you with that game. You just have to accept that you're going to suck and it's going to take a while to pick up stuff. Can yeah. you just start calling him Chris? No. <laughs> no. I'm not going to dox Chris. I mean, you. <laughs> no. Um. But yeah. I uh, love that game. It's really been consuming a lot of my time. Um. But anyway, other games. Yeah. Uh, I played some League of Legends. Oh, uh, you, you sound hesitant. Uh... Are you, are you starting to finally like, yeah, maybe I should go back to Dota? Yeah, I, I have been. And it's it's actually not for the reason you think. So the one thing that I really loved, that forfeit mechanic in League, uh, I am learning the double-edged sword. So like 10 minutes into some of my matches, you know, when, when somebody has died too many times, it's just like, well, this is a wash forfeit. And the whole team's like, yep, no, nope, you died three times. That's the game. And we're like, but, but there are no towers down. We're, we're 10 minutes in. We literally have two-thirds of the game left. Why, why are we forfeiting? And, uh, yeah, it gets, it gets really annoying. So I, I was the one asshole who absolutely refused to, uh, to forfeit for a couple of these games and, you know, get every hateful message under the sun because it is the great, bright, and shining example of, you know, video game maturity, which is the League community. Um, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Not exactly, after, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, after getting every message under the sun, turns out that at minute like 32, we win. Uh, yeah, it was always possible. Everybody just gives up. And it's, I get why the forfeit mechanic is there because everybody has been in a Dota game that was lost at minute 45 that then resolved itself at minute 70. And the time in between the, the point where you lost versus you actually lost fucking sucks. Oh, yeah, there's no big there's one. A there are instances where you're not going to come back, yeah. but people, some people tend to give up on situations quicker than they should. Yeah. And happens in all games with the fourth mechanic suffer from that. Like rocket, yeah. League, same thing. I wish that there was a way I, I don't reporting to strong works. I don't want bands association, but yeah. almost like an early, like this dude's an early quitter. And eventually, like, you get queued against people that do the same, and you can kind of avoid that in a stack if you're a player of good rep. That way you don't yeah. have to deal with it, because it's a negative energy. Like, it's as soon as someone thinks that they're dead, they'll start being super careless. 
And uh, like, Chewie, I'm, I'm not referring to just the game that you and I played. Like there, there have been others where I've encountered the same issue. And oh hell, Rocket League! It was a minute left. We went down by one goal. Both my teammates wanted to fucking forfeit. Oh, I hate that yeah. the one goal it, differential forfeit. Like, what are you doing? It's a goal. One you, goal. Like, it and takes it's not, a, a lucky kickoff to shore up that lead. Yeah, I'll never quit on two goals, even with like thirty. Yeah, but and the big thing is like, if it's one zero, okay, you can feel like you've been getting outplayed. It was like four to three. Like we've already scored on them three <laughs> times. Why the fuck aren't we gonna get a fourth? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's I I am learning or I'm starting to see the the cracks in League's armor. Um and it's again, I don't want to call it a bad game, but it's interesting to see those trade-offs where Dota will absolutely make you wait the 25 minutes in a losing game to leave. League says, "Yeah, no, your teammates can offer to quit whenever the fuck they want for whatever reason." Um and if you're if you're the one one motherfucker who who believes uh, you are now your team's main enemy, um, which sucks. That really sucks. Um, I kind of, kind of wish those votes were secret. Um, but yeah, you you do get like the the bar, and it shows okay, green, 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 red. Fuck Tom. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah. it's not the worst game. I I do want to go back and play Dota just to like refresh my compare and contrast list. Mm-hmm. Um, I do still think League is easier to pick up than Dota, but Dota's got more more ways to play. So in League, it's very much a, you know, there's one person in top lane. You have to have a jungler. There's a mid person. There's a bottom uh, and then a support that goes on the bottom lane. And it's it's not like mandated. You can absolutely change those things. But if you do... If you put two people in top lane, which is super common in Dota 2, you're going to get reported for trolling, which is hilarious. Like the the meta has become the only way to play the game. And if you try to break that at all, you're out. Like Dota 2 absolutely embraces meta breaking to a large extent. Like, hey, do you want to take Lich mid and just roll a a frosty boy carry? You can. It's probably a shitty idea, but you can. Uh, And like, People, people are going to yell at you, but it's not not like it would ruin the game completely. It's not like you're throwing. And I feel that a lot of the characters, they can roll up and play different ways. Yeah. Like, um, Bounty Hunter can be a support. He can be a three. I mean, he's never going to be a hard carry. To call out Bounty. He's never going to be a hard carry, but there's a lot of different roles he can fill. Yeah. So, I mean, some players like that, or characters like that, I think, Dota play styles work better because you can just free flow with it. Just do what yeah. you want with the dude. Like I, if we're in an all pick, I lock in bounty first. Everyone else goes fucking carry. Yeah, I'll run him as a five. Yeah. But yeah, that's eh, league. It's what you get for trying. Go back to Dota. <laughs> Go back to hating life. Or neither. You can also just play a different game. That That's not an option. There has to be a MOBA in the life. Oh. No, I, I Closest thing to a MOBA I'll ever play is Tarkov. <laughs> I, I'm interested in the Pokemon. I think it's going to be extremely shallow. I think it will be as expansive as some mobile MOBA games. I'm fine with that. Like, keep in mind, like, uh, Underlords is a mobile game. It has enough depth for me. Yeah, but that's not what I look for in a MOBA. Like, I don't want a MOBA that plays like Heroes of the Storm. I mean, it it could be fun and different. Like, they could break the mold a little bit on the, the I gotta hate this term, the Try Hardy MOBA. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I love getting those kind of um questions while we're doing the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I'm not sure if Freddie is in Twitch, but Freddie, we are uh, co-owners. Three out of the four co-owners for Seventy Two Pin Connector. The one out of the four that is not here is Josh, and that's because he's always busy arguably doing, the most important <laughs> yeah, doing, doing team stuff and you know the stuff that actually matters for uh, you know the Seventy Two Pin Connector Rocket League team. So, but yeah, either way, um, 
games. There's got to be more of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's, Tom, you played more. something. <laughs> I did. I played Destiny 2 last night. Oh. So you guys remember I, I got Destiny like over a year ago, I want to say. Um, you bitched about it? Yeah, and I, and I bitched about it. But I decided last night, hey, I want something that's not Halo. Like, I don't want to get into Halo multiplayer because I don't want to actually try. I just want to like shoot some random generic aliens and just vibe out and chill and listen to music all night. So I did that after Beat Saber because I needed something a little less intense and a little easier on my fragile body. Um, so I fired up Destiny, and I got a cutscene that had no context to it. And I was like, all right, that's kind of neat. And then I got another one without context. And then I was dropped into a random level where I instantly died because I was way underleveled for it. And it turns out that that was a preview for like an expansion that you can buy except it didn't work on me because I wasn't high enough level to be there anyway. So I just kept dying and I was like, well, fuck this. I'm going back to my ship. <laughs> so that was shitty. Uh, and then I, I get to my ship. I fire off the map. I'm like, all right, what quest was I on? There's like a no. hundred thousand fucking icons on this thing. Okay. Well, I've got a quest list here, but it doesn't actually show me where to go or what to do. It just has some flavor text. Well, maybe if I look around for this icon, ah, oh, shit, there are four of them. <laughs> uh, fuck. What the, what the fuck does this mean? Where am I going? I literally, I spent a half an hour last night and a half an hour this morning trying to play Destiny 2 because it's been over a year since I've played this thing. There needs to be, like, for, for long-term style, lifestyle games... There needs to be like a retutorializing that happens if they detect, hey, this person hasn't logged in in a year and a half. Here are the basic things. Here's how to play the game. So I can either I, I can either like restart my entire character and throw away all my progress, or I can just try to muddle through and maybe watch some YouTube videos to figure out how this thing fucking works. And Destiny is not exactly a complex game. You run around and you shoot stuff, and it's not as much fun as Borderlands when it did the same thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, I got rid of it. And what's sad is that I spent 45 minutes and 100 gigabytes installing this thing that I'm going to throw away again after an hour of playing it. Uh, um, a lot of people do like it, though, too. right? Like, it's pretty I, popular. It's... Uh -huh. It's like most other yeah. MMOs where you don't actually like playing it. <laughs> Just have Stockholm Syndrome. And you have to. Well, okay. as we was joking around with the Acro about that, he was um, just playing, um, what's it called? Uh, RuneScape. And the joke was, it's not that he likes RuneScape. He has to play RuneScape. Yeah. Like the, it's just how that goes. <laughs> it's, like, it's like trying to like walk away from Dota 2 or Rocket League after putting in thousands of hours, right? Oh, what are you going to do? You're just going to leave those skills on the floor? You're just going to stop playing Rocket League forever? Yeah, it's a bad game. Yeah, League is a bad game. Yeah, you hate it. Are you going to stop? Nah, that's what I thought. I wouldn't call Rocket, Rocket League, League a, bad not game. a bad no. game. <laughs> so how uh, dare you call this a bad I, game? I have I have heard so many, like, and this is probably just the high-level players being high-level players, but so many high-level players bitch and moan about Rocket League being broken in X, yeah, Y, or Z way. Yeah. Yep. Well, and just like everyone complains about the server's and most of the time, it's fucking internet lag situations. Yeah. Like, that's what most of the issues are. But the hell with that. It has to be something else. It has to be the servers, servers and the game's broken. Yeah. <laughs> Not to say that there aren't bad servers. Oh, you absolutely. Yeah, no. Like, when you yeah. get that Sometimes server rack some... icon. We call yeah. those jiggly servers. The jiggly servers? Yeah. Because all the physics just kind of jiggle around a little bit like they shouldn't. <laughs> like, when they add, the server rewinds on you. Yeah. We've, we've got a couple people in, in chat saying, hey, I did it after I put this many hours into this thing. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm just saying it's way harder to throw away something after you have thousands of hours in it than to oh, be like, yeah. I bought this game. I played it for six minutes. It's trash. And I'm going to never think about it again versus it's the sunk cost fallacy. Oh, my God, I put in so much time. Can I really throw this away? Uh, and it's, yeah. it's a lot of, you know, it's kind of a heavy decision for some people. Like I, I agree. I was there in Dota, right? Two thousand hours. I'm just like, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. Uh, so I stopped. Yeah. Um. That's. I put away Dota 
like you said, for the most part. I picked it back up a few months ago, played for a month or two, and that's it. Uh, RuneScape was the hardest one for me to walk away from. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't wow say that. Hard for me. Rocket League. Rocket League is the hardest one for me to walk away yeah. from. Because I've yet to Same. be able to. Um, I haven't so walked don't... away from it, but I finally got to the point where I'm not playing every day. I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, I'm still an everyday guy. I'm still there. Yeah. Um, and that's fair. World of Warcraft was difficult for me to walk away from. Oh, yeah. You were a big WoW guy. Yep. Way back. Way back. I, I have been clean for a while. I keep going back. I'm not going back this time. I'm done. Fuck Blizzard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so speaking of walking away from things and yeah, I was gonna say let's yeah. walking in general, we get in, do we need to get into it now? Let's yeah, get into okay. it. You know, All right. Let's talk about walking simulators because Adam and I picked this up and we have been <laughs> simulatedly walking for a little bit. Oh, did but you play it too, simulation Tom? of have walking, you it? not just hold left. Yeah, yeah, I okay, have, I've okay. actually been playing it. Okay, on cool, stream cool. even, I got it working. Oh, nice! I missed it. Oh yeah, so uh, real quick, uh, sidebar, Tom, what was your issue? Ah, uh, yeah. So um, <laughs> it was weird. I was bringing up Streamlabs OBS, and it was perfectly fine, game running perfectly. Like I run and stream, like I do high quality streams and high quality VR games at the same time while streaming in discord at the same time like i'm doing a lot of shit my computer handles it like a goddamn champ it's a brand new rig it has no issues doing anything it's great but every time i would leave streamlabs obs and full screen the game four frames per second on everything like even my webcam four frames wow. per second That's it awful. was bad so i tried everything i could i even took it down to like 720p death stranding exited every single other application put everything down to the lowest possible setting still three to four frames per second changed encoding like uh, like encoders changed the bit rate of the stream tried everything i could could not fix the fucking problem updated my drivers rebooted did all this stuff re-verified all my files reinstalled some stuff nothing uh i tried it with plain old uh, obs studio and uh, yeah, it's perfect. It it was perfect. Hmm. Literally nothing so, was wrong except Streamlabs OBS. So uh, that sounds like a similar is. issue that's been discussed by certain individuals in the podcasting team before. Uh, I am completely unfamiliar <laughs> with what you're saying. It's almost Dude. as if I've had issues. It's almost like uh, about four or five months ago, I had to abandon using Streamlabs because of podcasting issues for some unforeseen reason. I still, I don't remember. Was I not there? I probably wasn't there. Oh. This is the first time okay. I've done the podcast. Oh, Sorry, okay. my headphones yeah. disconnected. I can't first hear time. you guys now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, yeah, heard, anyway. I've heard other people having problems with Streamlabs OBS too. I guess I haven't had any. I mean, the podcast is running on Streamlabs OBS right now. Um, I think yeah. it's going pretty well, smoothly. Weird. But It was yeah. working great It's probably me. specific. And then, yeah. then it was bad. And it wasn't even that one game. Like, I thought, okay, well, maybe Death Stranding is doing something fucking weird. So I loaded up SimCity Jurassic Park, uh, which I still need to get back to because it looks That's like a I'm great fun. game. Great game. I'm really Sorry. looking forward to playing it. But I loaded up SimCity Jurassic Park, which is not a hard game to run. It is several years old, and it's a goddamn city builder. I should be able to run it at like a billion frames per second. Um, Literally you know, without, a without, billion. Yeah, without even fucking blinking. I've got a 2080 should be fine um and streamlabs gave me the three to four frames per second there too hmm. yeah so it was it was bad my general thought is and this is just from what i've heard personally so it's basically anecdotal but it seems like there are regular obs is maybe a little more stable on average for most people but Streamlabs OBS for the people who don't have issues with it has way more quality of life stuff in it. Yeah. So you, it's that trade off of, uh, I guess, stability versus I, convenience. Yeah. I haven't used uh, Ob Studio in a very long time. And they actually started backporting some of the stuff that Streamlabs is oh, okay. doing, including nice. dockable dialogue. So if you click the connect my Twitch account button, you just log in through Twitch. It drops a little OAuth token on your computer. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it actually brings in chat, all the like stream changing features, 
Uh, like it does a whole lot of the same things that Streamlabs does, but in the Ob Studio package. So if you haven't tried it for a while, pick it up again. It might do exactly what you need. Like if you need chat in that same window, it'll do it now. That's one of my favorite See, parts. I've, I've never needed that. So I've always just ran chat on opposite window. Mm -hmm. But I, I get the benefit of that. I absolutely mm -hmm. get the benefit of that. It's just nice having it all in one package, just easily yeah. open up one program, hit the button, you know, whatever. Yeah, for but sure. Anyways. And if, if it continues to work for you, like I literally would not have changed if I had not had any issues. Um, but if you do have issues and you're looking for something else, Ob Studio, yeah, it worked for me. Nice. Well, anyway, let's get back to the yes. bread and butter of this. You guys have been stranding death. Yes, How Death is Stranding of Death? Death it's Stranding. The first strand type game. It's actually the second. The first one was Bubsy 3D. Oh, right. Sorry. Second strand type game. <laughs> we no, need to categorize a, uh, everything we call right. Bubsy because it's getting to be a meta game. Like we need everything. to just play it, honestly. No. I think there's actually a rule in our Discord that there will be no Bubsy 3D channels to stream <laughs> or else you get banned. I'll take I a strike. I, I threw it. I threw it in there literally to see if anybody would read the rules and like say, "Hey Tom, what's up with Bubsy 3D?" And like literally one person did that, mm -hmm. and the rest of them like either nobody read the rules or everyone's just like, "No, that makes sense. Bubsy 3D is banned." Yeah, That's no one reads rules. No one yeah, reads welcome pages. No one reads rules. I know. No. But no, Death Stranding. It's the uh, action adventure, post-apocalyptic Amazon Prime delivery simulator game. Yeah. Right, more or less. Um, I would be surprised if. Oh, what what did Dobby say? Adam towed the line and listened to the soundtrack. What for Death Stranding? I don't understand I don't what he's saying. I don't get what he's saying, but either way. Bubsy. Bubsy. Oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. It was the yeah. worst thing I've ever heard in my life. Bubsy um, three soundtrack. I apologize if the you. Bubsy three D. Uh, music composer is listening i'm sorry but i that was one of the more you annoying things i've tried no. to listen to in a very long time <laughs> no 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 apologies no apologies it's how you feel fuck that it was it's not it was not just like oh this is bad it was actively annoying to listen to it is ear cancer is it like that song that the scientists tried to make the most annoying song by, there are like, a lot of opinion? similar elements honestly i'm not <laughs> oh, even kidding God. i'm not even kidding <laughs> It's it's abysmal. But um yeah, so we're avoiding Death Stranding again. Back on Death Stranding. Death Stranding, the Kojima Productions game. Um Yeah. Tom, what do you think of it? Like what what was your initial impression? So my initial impression, and this is this is going to sound like an indictment or like I'm reaming the game, and I promise I'm not. I have a point to what I'm about to say. Uh-huh. Playing Death Stranding feels a whole lot like playing I Am Bread or Quop. It feels very similar in certain ways. Um, where in those games, movement is the mechanic. Because usually in a video game, you hold the stick and you move and that's it. There's no mechanical finesse about it. You just hold it and you move. Mm -hmm. In Death Stranding, it feels like moving effectively and efficiently getting your person from point A to point B is the name of the game. And every single element of gameplay leans hard into that. Everything from the stamina systems to a fully realized waiting loadout physics system, everything is designed to further complicate the equation of how do I physically walk from this location to this location? Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting to me. It's, it's I want to say it's the first game since Mario 64 that has actually made me think about movement in that critical of a capacity. Like Mario 64 is all about how do I take this fat little plumber and get him to get here? And Death Stranding is, ah, oh, fuck, a hill and the ground is slippery. <laughs> Shit. And you got, what, 100 pounds on your back? Yeah. yeah how, it, how do I get this absurd stack of boxes on my back up this mountain? Yeah. Like, it sounds really frustrating, and in some places and it, it is. is. And I think it's supposed to be. But... Yeah, it feels good to play. It feels fully realized, and it doesn't feel... Like, Quop feels complicated because that 
it wants to be complicated. Mm -hmm. Death Stranding feels complicated because, hey, you've got 100 pounds of shit on your back. Also, the terrain is fully realized and you've got to treat the earth in the ground like the earth or the ground. If you've ever been hiking and not perfect conditions, you know exactly what goes into just trying to walk without falling over. Death Stranding is that, but in a video game. Yeah, and I will say it's not as mechanically challenging or complicated as Quop. Like, no, no, you can it. still just move the analog stick and walk, right? You just have to account for, you know, if you have a lot of weight on your back or it's lopsided weight, and you go to turn your character, you're going to start to lose your balance, and you have to use the L2 and R2 buttons to kind of rebalance yourself center. Um, yeah. kind so it's of, kind like of grinding in well, Tony Hawk. Uh, yes and no. So it kind of is, but it's not that like. It's not that progressive left to right balance. It's more, oh, you're leaning left, hold L2 for a couple seconds, now you're center. Yeah. What happens if you hold it for too long? Will you overcompensate no. and then fall? Uh maybe. Yeah. Depends I, on how I, 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 it depends on how heavily you're leaning. And this all depends on your equipment. It depends on what terrain you're on. It depends on how much you have on you. So um, just like a, a freight train is really hard to stop once it gets going, if you've got like 200 pounds of gear on your back and you get a running start, you're not going to turn on a dime. And if mm -hmm. you try, you're going to face plant. You're also not going to stop on a dime. If you exactly. try, you're yeah. going to skip. Yeah. If you, if you just completely let go of the analog stick while going down a hill, your dude's going to stumble forward and he's going to, you know, continue to, to move further until he can, you know, get his momentum back down to nothing. Yeah. Um, so uh, terrain getting across it is important mm -hmm. going uphill so like let's say you have a big old like crag or something in front of you like you're getting ready to go up a nasty ass hill or mountain mm -hmm. you have a lot of weight do you need to redistribute the weight from how it was when you were on the plains to how you are when you're going uphill you can no you can but i've never had a problem with it honestly i've been kind of lazy when it comes to loading the cargo on the body there's an auto load button that basically optimizes that. So it'll make sure it's balanced and put what it can on like your limbs instead of everything on the back. So it's not too tall, that kind of stuff, it feels uh, which like is a nice there's, feature. There's a lot of easy buttons to say, hey, look, if you're just trying to get through the fucking game, press this magic button to auto skip these dialogues or, you know, automatically put this stuff on in the most optimized pattern. But if you want to min max, if you want to say, OK, well, I know that there's a long stretch of hill that's not too steep, but I also want to make really good time. Let's front load these packs, lean in hard, and then use the weight of the equipment to push myself along. Like you can get really in depth with the mechanics if you want to. If you don't care, you don't have to. You press the easy magic loadout button and you're good. So I like that. It makes the game more accessible where if you want to be hardcore about it, you can. Other people can be like, on it if they want i still yeah. don't think it's particularly accessible i think i mean it's got mixed reviews for a good reason like i i like what it's going for but i could completely see why this would not be somebody's game yeah it is so like I'm the game is overall honestly the game is a slog and i know it's, it's supposed to feel that way but it absolutely yeah. is in every single aspect not just the fact that you're literally walking across country um like all the the systems you have to learn, there are a lot of systems and menus in this game, and they are it very very game. tedious to navigate at times. It, so the menuing honestly feels more like Tarkov than anything else. There are menus on menus on menus on menus, and the result of the things you're choosing and changing, you probably won't realize the you know the benefit or detriment of your choices until like 15 hours in. It just right. like right at the start of the game, they hit you with like all these menus and then, oh, hey, look, you're unlocking stats for this thing. Well, what the fuck does my miscellaneous level mean on this panel? What does that do for me? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, you don't know? I don't know either. Cool. Thanks for the update, dude. Um, there's also one funny bit that I did want to mention in the beginning of the game. No less than I, I am going to estimate this. No less than 47,000 times. Does the game say in big letters, a game by Hideo Kojima? <laughs> um, <laughs> this guy doesn't have an ego at all. <laughs> no, not at all. Like, it literally, around every single cutscene, and then you get into the game, and then there's some stuff that happens, and then right afterwards, it's just like a game by Hideo. And you're like, okay, all right, we, we get it. 
I understand you're proud of it, mm -hmm. but but we've seen your name like six times already. You want a, a game by Hideo? Okay, all right. Okay. Did you guys <laughs> did you guys see the BBC piece? They gave uh, BBC gave them access or Kojima gave them access uh, before, like when they were first starting out and when they were finishing. And man, that dude has his hands on everything yes, about that game. Mm -hmm. Yes, he does. Like to a detriment where like <laughs> if it's going to go bad, it's, it's probably going to go bad because of that. It's got to be his passion project for sure. Yes, absolutely. So okay. yeah, the, the main, I guess my main gripe with the game is so far the menus and systems. It's just a lot to learn and then to actually physically navigate all the menus and systems I think is kind of annoying. But yeah. um, overall, I like the game. It's interesting, and I like that it's different. I like that there's this AAA game that is just completely unlike any other AAA game. Like it doesn't, it doesn't have all of the same. It's doing know. indie stuff. Yeah, kind so, of. It kind of is. One thing that does not feel unique about Death Stranding at all is the fact that the story is just Kojima. <laughs> that is it. Like if you if you imagine Kojima going completely off his rocker completely, yes, I said completely twice. It's that much. Um, like rocker on the floor tipped over and the storybook fell out of his hands. That is Death Stranding. You will need um, like a, a vocab book just to get started with this thing. All right. Well, there are chiral entities and crypto. Yeah, there's a lot of jargon to learn. There's a lot of jargon to learn time fall and a bt and then a bb and a bridge baby and then you ate the baby and like i don't there's the game it's, is it's so a certain brand weird. it's a certain brand of weird but i like that about it that's one of the it things is very i do unique. like is it an incomprehensible amount of weird yes, or there, is it um, a really pretty the, blend i don't i don't know how deep the story goes but it's very clear early on it's pretty simple to understand the goal of the story like it's not completely incomprehensible or anything it's um it's not as the, crazy the as what i've heard goal, kingdom hearts is for oh, the kingdom overarching hearts is a fucking mess i can i can agree with that like your goal is relatively clear like mm -hmm. the things you're supposed to be doing it's relatively clear but if you try to ask why at all that's it that's the only question if you try to ask why to anything in that game you're not going to get a satisfying answer, at least not in the very beginning. Well, why am I eating bugs? Um, it replenishes your blood. That's yeah, explained. but why? Well, yeah, yeah. Because no. you use so, your blood as a weapon. Why am I eating bugs? Why am I not eating like, like right, a fruit yeah. salad or something? Like, well, I mean, and yeah. why? Why are these bugs out here? What caused them? What is a time fall? Why is there a void out? Like this. All the questions of why the world is the way it is, um, it does feel very intentionally obfuscated because it, well, at, at its core, it's a mystery game. Like, that's the point. Yeah, I was going to say, if it's a thing of why, I'm not trying that... to say I don't take your word for meaning, but I don't think that's a valid argument until the game's complete because that could be part of the game of the discovery. It's yeah, also I'm like sure it there doesn't have to be a reason for every little thing. Like you can ask why are the why are they bugs and not a fruit salad, but what does that matter? It doesn't matter at all in the grand scheme I, of things. A lot of this, like it's style, is it all it feels, is. Feels it almost felt overwhelming. Like the very start of the game was just oh that's fucking weird, and then you know repeat for the first five hours of the game is you just saying oh that was fucking weird every single cutscene. Like that's yeah. that's the only feeling I got from the story of Death Stranding so far is that was fucking weird. It's delightfully weird. I like that. I like the style. I like the. I don't know. Just I that don't, particular I don't brand of weirdness. It. I am afraid that it won't pay off. I am afraid that he's had these problems in the Metal Gear Solid franchise before, where there's some some big thing and it's a mystery and you get way too involved in it, and then no, nah, it, it turns out the guy was just made of feathers. Don't worry about it. I mean, um, it's a vampire for some reason, but yeah, yeah. I, I really hope that there not, are payoffs to the story because Kojima has had um, those issues before. I don't care that much about the story, honestly. It's that's that's why I like, played Kojima games, though. That's why I hated <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Five, which was technically and gameplay wise the best Metal Gear Solid ever. But 
literally the weakest in story terms that the series has ever been, even compared to the NES games. And I stopped playing it because of that. Mm -hmm. okay. I guess I'm saying so, I enjoy it on the surface level of imagery and cinematics and stuff in that in that vein. Like I, it is I want I want to know how the story plays out and stuff. It's not that I'm not into the story, but I'm not dying for answers. You're not emotionally not invested in what the game's going to tell you. You're just there to experience it. Correct. See, I'm invested. I, I get that. that that's kind of how I was with like something like a No Man's Sky. It's like, I don't give a fuck about what they try to do for a story. This game is something well, that I'm atmospheric want to be in. Uh, it's, I like the story more than that. But <laughs> well, no, no, no. I get that's like, an extreme example. Like, I, I'm... I'm going forward in the game because i do want to see how the story goes like that's a big motivator but i'm not trying to figure out the why of everything as tom was saying before like I, i'm just taking a lot of it at face value and just seeing where it goes all right some of the metaphors though like especially i just i just finished what chapter two or chapter three something like that but some of the metaphors and the reason for your mission feel very it's very heavy-handed yeah like the, the dialogue like, the dialogue overall is kind of weird like people repeat themselves and yeah like it, maybe there's some japanese to english translation stuff i don't know so I'm, I'm about to i'm about to pull old ass tv so if you've ever seen mash and their their very political moral of the story messages were very heavy-handed it's not like that kind of heavy-handed it's like you wake up after somebody hits you in the face with a rubber mallet kind of heavy handed. Like there's a lot of talk about, we got to do this to, to rebuild America mm -hmm. because we're so divided right now as a nation mm -hmm. and everyone has isolated themselves into their own beliefs and power structures. And you're just like, and then there's this thing cool. that's basically the internet called the chiral network. And to con connect to that internet, you have to wear these handcuffs, mm -hmm. the social media handcuffs. And everything you do gets likes from other players on the little social media thing. Like <laughs> you, you get paid in Facebook likes. That is your currency. Yeah. You get paid with likes. I will say though, I like the multiplayer social aspect of the game. I think that's one of the things yeah. that shines the most positively. Like we're saying a lot of I things was about, ask you about we're that. saying a lot of things about the game that sounds like we don't like the game, and that's not the case. I like um, the game. I like I it. I just so think far. it's really fucking weird. You gotta know what you're yeah. getting into with Death yeah. Stranding, especially yeah. because it's a $60 triple-A game. Mm -hmm. like, it's okay. not for everybody. Feel, That's a big investment to... for basically a bunch of fetch quests if you want to really yeah. reduce it down. Yeah. So, Adam, explain mm -hmm. the multiplayer elements of this game because uh, that is what I really was intrigued by with this game. So, once you once you get an area in the game onto the, the in-game internet chiral network thing, um, which is the main purpose of all of your delivery missions and stuff is to get everything connected onto that network. Uh, once you get something connected to that network, you can start to utilize structures and tools that other players have built. So over time, as players progress, you know, you might, you, you have to get up to this high cliff, um, but it's too steep to walk up. But, oh no, look, we're on a flat surface. I can build a ladder right here and just climb straight up. When other players get to that point in the game, they will see your ladder. They will see your name attached to your ladder. They can give you their social media likes for your dopamine hit or whatever, and they can use your ladder. Um, there are other structures, like bigger structures, things like, uh, like watchtowers. You can build roads and vehicles and all kinds of crazy stuff I haven't gotten super into yet. Um, or players can request a structure, like, hey, it would be super nice if we had a bridge here. And then you can choose to to help out and build that bridge, or somebody has started construction on like an auto road builder thing, and it just needs a bunch of materials. And other players can contribute their materials to that structure for the gain of everybody. It feels That's... like anti Dark Souls. So whereas exactly. Dark Souls, you go to the beginning area of a game, you turn human, you you know, which unlocks the multiplayer capabilities, and you just get fucking slapped by people who have played the game before. In this, it's literally the opposite. You know, you fire it up, you get something on the chiral network, and holy fuck, there's a ladder right when you needed it the most. Oh my god, I don't have to trek through this dangerous mountain. Mm -hmm. I can just go over the top of it. Thank you, Doug, or whoever the fuck your name Doug. is. I appreciate <laughs> Thanks, you Doug. on a fundamental level. I'm going to hit you with those Facebook likes. Mm -hmm. um, 
And a it, lot it of Zombie does call out that there are notes in Dark Souls, and yeah, mm -hmm. but the the majority of the multiplayer game and the majority of your experience with the apparent multiplayer is getting wrecked by invaders. Now mm -hmm. I have had notes in Dark Souls kill me. Try jumping <laughs> a lot. Uh, uh, but it, yeah. I haven't seen any griefing so far. That said, I am very early on in the game, but mm -hmm. it seems like it might be difficult to grief with this yeah. type of thing. Yeah, I can't see a whole lot of possibilities for griefing. Um, so I, one, I, thing I, I don't fully, one thing I don't fully understand about some of the systems with that is what benefit do you have personally if somebody else gives you likes and uses your structures? Mm -hmm. Which I think the main answer is you should just feel good about it. Like you don't yeah. need to have some in-game incentive to help out other players. Like you can even like if somebody if somebody loses a piece of their cargo, another player can pick that cargo up and choose to deliver it to a post box or its destination. It's so weird. It's so weird to encounter other players' failed quests and then to be able to just pick up the slack. Like, nah, don't worry, guy. I got you. I'll help you. Yeah. Like, so I don't know enough really, about the well, systems and stats and stuff to like see how much that would benefit you personally, but I like the fact so that you have I, the option and can do so out of the good of goodness of your own heart, right? So can I start a mission, realize, ah, it's going to be hard with this much shit, shed it in the middle, and just hope someone gets that to the spot? Um, I don't know how don't it know. works for you. Dobby asking, can you sabotage them? I haven't seen any way no, to sabotage so. other players. No, because if you lose cargo and go to drop it off, I'm pretty sure you just get like a lower score on the delivery or or you yeah. just can't turn it in. Okay, so yeah. you don't get any benefit of them completing your quest. They get some form of something somewhere probably. Yeah, Yeah, but at the same time, if you failed a quest, like you don't feel like, oh, this time is completely wasted. Like if you're involved in the world and especially in the community multiplayer aspect, you realize, fuck, I failed that quest. But some dude has got four random pieces of gear out there to, to you know, beef up their, their stuff or get extra XP or get, you know, materials or whatever you get from completing those, you know, totally optional side missions. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you realize you have just created content for somebody else to go through. That There's, is the coolest shit about this game is the multiplayer interaction. Yeah. There's yeah. even um, there's even a big shared locker system. Like you can choose to yep. put supplies in a locker that any player can just take for themselves like there's a there's a whole shared locker where people can add and take resources from as they want i'm sure with limits i haven't actually tried to do much of that stuff yet but yeah, and i'm sh sure there's some kind of server world bundling that goes on behind the scenes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i will but say I'm... that there are, there are moments in this game um that are not chill walking hiking simulators. Yes. Like uh I'm I'm not trying to get into any story details, but when you when you had to light the fire to use a Dark Souls reference, um, you know, trying to get out of that place and there's like the, the weird creatures and you gotta literally do Metal Gear Solid style stealth challenges to get through. <laughs> it was really really I, I don't want to say unnerving it was really stressful it was really tense it was like the best moments in any stealth action game mm -hmm. it's like oh fuck fuck i gotta get through here oh shit he's right on me all right hold on hold on stay here don't breathe crouch in the tall grass because this is a triple a game all right now we can move on so uh scott wants to make um a logistical company in a game like this he's asking like if or saying it would be really nice if there was a system where you could um effectively accept a mission and then thread that mission out through your team <laughs> that would be me that would be like death stranding 2 the stranding continues <laughs> even strandier Strand than the first <laughs> the second ever <laughs> stranding style game <laughs> Um, God, another, so cringy another thing I like right another thing I like about the game and its presentation of the story and characters is how it it like takes itself super seriously and then it doesn't Ooh. like there's an inherent absurdity to the whole thing and I know a lot of it's self-aware and maybe some of it isn't but I, it's just I like that about it like there's a part in the in the um, early part of the game during a cutscene and 
you're driving in this truck thing with these other characters and the guy's just like shit a rainbow and then it, the camera pans to the rainbow and you hear like the shrieky violin sound and it's like <laughs> what rainbow? <laughs> the rainbow why but are then, rainbows bad yeah and it's just funny in itself but like within the game world the rainbow means something uh, that can be a bad thing you know the rain is dangerous in that game it's just like little things like that are funny. The fact that it's monster energy drink in the game that you drink yeah. is funny. Like, and not only just, just entertaining. Cans, you have a flask that whenever you come into contact with water or the rain, it filters that stuff out and adds it to this like magical techno canteen thing. But it's not water. It mixes that perfectly good water with monster energy drink particles. <laughs> so you have a full unlimited techno canteen of monster energy drink. Mm hmm. That's funny. As long as it was done without, I mean, even if it was done with sponsorship, it's a funny way. It is because there are literal monster cans with all of the text on the back, the logo. It's literally a green monster can. It is like even even the game. It says monster energy. Yeah, it it says you know contains product placement. Oh, at least they're not hiding it then. Yeah, (laughs) no, No, they very much show it to you front and center. They double (laughs) down on it. Yeah, they're it's funny not to. Not to get into any story spoilers, but a lot of the things are metaphors for Kojima's time in Konami, where, you know, a character is saying, no, I don't want to do this thing. I, I left this world behind. I, mm-hmm. I intentionally made sure that I would never come back to this. No, we're pulling you back in, Sam. Mm-hmm. You got to do this stuff. And you can just see Kojima, you know, slaving away on Metal Gear Solid 4, even though he already said, dude, I'm retired. Metal Gear Solid is done shit konami needs another stock hit we gotta put out a new one (laughs) another another, a lot of that another thing i like is the uh so you connect yourself you've seen probably if you've seen any of the trailers the little baby in the the (laughs) canister looking thing yeah so those are called bbs which stands for uh bridge baby but everybody calls them bbs and all the dialogue just sounds ridiculous because they're like you ha- you have a a genuine connection with the BB. You must protect the BB. And it just sounds like somebody saying "baby" in like a baby talk voice, and it's just funny. Oh, I just needed a cute BB. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is so delicious. Be, be careful. Be careful when jostling around too much, and you might distress the BB. <laughs> like <laughs> it's just, every time, it's just comical. Like, it's funny. If you like Kojima, if you like his brand of weirdness, if you really love the Metal Gear Solid franchise, story-wise and writing, and you love everything kind of self-reverent about that, you're probably going to love the story of Death Stranding. I don't want to sound like I've been complaining about it, because I really do appreciate Mm -hmm. it for what it is, but Mm -hmm. you got to understand, you are signing up for a Kojima game. That is what you're getting without any kind of shackles. Mm-hmm. Okay, so before this came out, I was like, listen, are we all going to be shocked that he is just fucking batshit insane in this game? Is it to that point, or is it still comfortable level of insanity? He he is on brand, okay. which means it's nuts. It's really fucking weird, but it's not... It's weird, but it, it makes sense bad. within its... Self, it isn't I what I was worried about. Yeah, it's no. It's weird, no. but it's not like incomprehensible fucking mess. Kojima did this, not shit yeah. the bed with Death Stranding. At okay. All. Um, yeah. Because that, that it, was my. Is it, is it going to be as like widely revered as Metal Gear Solid 3? Hell fucking no, it's not. It, but it's not trying to be. It's its own mm-hmm. weird thing. Yeah. And it's going to get, I mean, some people will pan it because they're going to come in wanting something in that vein which that's yeah. their own fucking fault this mm-hmm. game is its own thing yeah that's and it's its own different thing like i said a lot of players probably won't like it because you're going to spend a lot of time traversing the land um there is a there's a moment of satisfaction though when you when you've gone on this long mission and you get and the, the objective is kind of on top of a mountain and you get on top of the mountain and you can look back all the look back the path you took there and just see how far you've traveled Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of cool in that in that aspect. If you've um, ever been hiking and you ended up on like the summit of a mountain or like mm-hmm. a big hill or something, and you look down and you're just like, "Shit, there's my mm-hmm. car." Yeah, it's that exact same feeling, but at every turn in the game. Yeah, but you have to remember you have to walk, or you know, there's vehicles and stuff that you can get later on. I'm sure, but like you have to traverse that land, so it's gonna be a lot of walking and stuff. 
you're going to have to do a lot yeah. of management um, too. It's not just like, all right, hold down the analog stick. Let's go for an hour. Um, yeah. And not, and not just from the balancing stuff too in the cargo, but like, you know, there's the, the time fall rain, which accelerates aging and stuff. So if your packages get rained on too much, they're going to degrade and you have to like manage that. You have to mm. build uh, cargo. What is it? Cargo repair spray. It's basically yep. a can of Lysol or, you have to spray on your stuff the, to repair find, it to a condition. A and, and wait out the rain. And if mm -hmm. you've got like a timed mission, you're sitting there like, dude, come on, I've got a schedule to keep. Why won't this rain fucking let up? Mm -hmm. And it makes the world feel like a real place. Um, um, now, your boots will wear out. You have to make new shoes. Mm -hmm. if, you're, if your shoes are all the way broken, you're going to slip easier. So there's a lot of stuff that some players might perceive as nagging that they have to deal with constantly. And I kind of sympathize with that a little bit, but it gives you something to like, you can't just have a game where you hold the analog stick and walk that far. There has to be something in there to keep you engaged. And I think that yeah. between trying to traverse the, the actual terrain itself and managing your equipment and the systems in the game, I think keeps, keeps it engaging enough to not feel like a complete bore fest. On the last thing I'm going to say on the gameplay, and I'm absolutely going to steal this from Super Bunny Hop, who did a fantastic analysis on Death Stranding when it released, is that navigating the terrain plays like Guitar Hero. And, and hear me out. You are constantly looking at like the bottom periphery of where you need to go in the game. You're constantly scanning and looking. You're like, okay, well, there's a rock coming up here, and it looks like this part kind of bends this way, and with my current loadout, I can't go there. And you're constantly like making these short micro steps, just looking at a uh, uh, the field moving towards you and making these micro optimizations and decisions, just like you're playing a track-based music game. It feels very similar to how you kind of visually perceive and react to stages in Guitar Hero. It's weird, and it works. So one more question about as part of the um, traversing. Is there a hydration, energy, anything yes. like that you yes. have to maintain? Yep. Yes. Yep. You have stamina. Um, you have to maintain the BB. Um, you have to maintain your blood level, I guess. Um, but yeah, the stamina is a big one. You know, if you're, you can, you can walk through a stream of water as long as it's not, you know, like neck deep or anything. You can walk through that stream of water. But depending on how fast the water is moving and how much cargo you have, it's going to drain your stamina meter. And if it goes down all the way, you get swept away in the water and you lose all your cargo. You have to collect it and put it back on your back and stuff. Oh, I can see where that would be ungodly tedious. And it so happen that happened did, to me the other day. How did we bury the lead? You can pee in this game. Yep. Oh. There. There's a urinate Ten mechanic. Out very strange that's interesting there's a lot of stuff that i don't know why it's there but it's there but it's there <laughs> yeah um one last thing i want to call out of the game other i think i've pretty much covered everything other than this the obviously the graphics are beautiful um it does support nvidia's dlss feature which is uh what's it called deep learning super sampling is that right that Acronym. sounds right. I honestly don't remember. Um, basically, no it uses an AI machine learning thing that's game specific to render the game, basically, or process the game at a lower resolution and then use that AI to generate uh, the gaps and upscale that resolution in a way that is not only visually almost identical, but some people actually think it makes the game look better. Mm -hmm. So... Huh. I don't have a 4K monitor, but I, I've heard that the higher the higher your native monitor resolution is, the the more uh, noticeable and impactful that feature is. But I'm literally like the game is processing at 720p and upscaling to 1080, and I can't see a difference at all. And it runs it way so better. Hard. It runs way better. It, it makes no sense. It completely it completely circumvents the whole like. Uh, visual fidelity versus frames per second like trade-off you always have to balance in every other type of game like what well, this this so is NVIDIA's, absolutely revolutionary nvidia's tech's pretty fucking good then it sounds yeah yeah oh it's amazing they actually use the cuda cores on the graphics card which go 
pretty unused doing most normal gameplay to do that AI rendering. So you're not mm -hmm. even using like the stuff that matters on your graphics card when you enable this feature. And it's got two different modes. You can either enable it for beauty mm -hmm. and make things just fucking shiny, or you can enable it for performance reasons and it will like dynamically shift what it's doing to try to make the game easier for the other cores, the other like standard graphics cores to render and then fill in the gaps with AI to maintain a crisp, whatever mm -hmm. you set as your target frame rate really fucking cool and even the beauty really preset will cool. increase fps like yeah like you could get a 30 fps difference literally yeah. just from enabling Easy. the feature one checkbox hmm. i went from and i had the game on complete max settings and gameplay was pretty smooth cut scenes would get laggy and and frame skippy and stuff turn on dlss perfectly smooth always is this a 2080 only feature or it's 20 all, series only? Um, this is RTX. RTX. Any okay. RTX cards. So yeah, that's, use it. It's the same tech the I talked about a little bit then. in control. Mm. Um, but the yeah. the machine learning models are trained game specifically. So some games it might work a little better for than others. It works fantastic in control, but some of the textures got a little wonky. Um, not a lot. Like it's so worth it to use it. But in this one, I haven't noticed anything weird. Really, really cool tech okay. stuff. That's really cool tech. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think it's revolutionary. Like I, I can't wait to see how, how that develops. I would in the love to see this stuff in like a future version of the Nintendo Switch. Like imagine something that is clearly right. underpowered mm -hmm. but looks goddamn incredible. Yeah, Nintendo needs that because their consoles are historically underpowered. Yeah. <laughs> And the, the last thing of Death Stranding I have to mention because I'm that guy. The soundtrack, the, uh, the, the score. Oh, it's the, so good. And, and not just, they, there's licensed music in the game too that they play at certain segments and that you can play in the music player in game. Those are fantastic too. I'm um, discovering new music that's cool. Um, but the that's actual cool. score Richard. itself is amazing. It is so good. It's this perfect blend of like your usual orchestral film score type thing mixed with a lot of synthesizers and electronic elements. It reminds me a lot of, um, I know Tom has. Irk, did you ever see Tron Legacy, the movie? The, like the new Tron game? Irk's typing. Yeah. Did Irk have oh, to no. do something? Irk, are Irk you alive? Here. I'm here. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> did I, you ever I restart my interface? Oh, gotcha. Okay. Did you ever see Tron Legacy? No. Okay. Did you anyway. actually ask me a question in the five yeah. seconds that I was yes, unable to do exactly. anything? That's God exactly. God damn! What this entire like last <laughs> thirty minutes, my name hasn't been brought up. I know. As soon as I restart uh, the interface. Yeah, and then the only reason I asked you specifically because is because me and Tom already talked about this briefly. Um, but the soundtrack, uh, I don't know if you heard, but it's like a. a brilliant mixture of orchestral and electronic elements and synthesizers and stuff um amazing soundtrack and it reminds me a lot of the tron legacy soundtrack which was made by daft punk and then another composer with them right yes okay hmm. but I, amazing soundtrack i'm the like, the first mission like because kojima kojima loves doing this thing where he'll bring in music where you don't expect it mid gameplay, but like that that first mission, and then the thing happens, and then it starts, and then the camera zooms out. Like it just it perfectly preps you for this is going to be this kind of game. Enjoy it. I loved right. it. I loved every minute of it. I really hope that that keeps up throughout the entire game. Like I would hate mm -hmm. for like that segment to be like in the two set pieces where I've seen it so far and they never get brought up again. Mm -hmm. Like I want Kojima to bring in the licensed soundtrack all the time, like for every impactful moment. That's what I want. I think I've heard in game, maybe four, four parts okay. where they play licensed music so far. I'm 11 hours in and I feel like I'm okay. just beginning to scratch the surface of the game. If that tells you anything. Okay. Like so... lengthwise. The game is a lot. It's just a lot I think, in every aspect. I think we're about to the end of the talk on yes. that. Yes. But I want to close this asking both of you guys a very pointed question. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you like the game? Yes. Yes. Okay. 
Um, I know they're for not, a little not bit universally. Wavy. Not universally. It's not there. There for... are things I really dislike about the game, mainly the the menus and stuff. And I understand that the game as a whole is a slog. Mm. But I think there's still something to appreciate within that. Okay, I understand this is loaded, so don't feel bad about this. Yeah. If I was to tell you for the rest of this month, well, now let's just say next month, you're allowed to play uh, one game and only one game. Would that be an acceptable solution or answer? Mm, like, not in no. the way I play games because I I usually have a single player game and then my multiplayer games in tandem for very right. different purposes. If if you, if you were to told me for a month I could only play one single player game, yeah, because yeah. I generally only do one single player game at a time anyway, until I uh, inevitably lose my interest or something else catches my interest, and then I switch that one single player game, never finishing any of them. But mm. <laughs> that's uh, that's beside the point. I I guess what I'm getting at is is it a game that you have to make sure you have other things you can spice it up with, or is the game on its yeah. own enough? Uh, I well, I think it just depends other, on the kind of person you are. Like, I I agree with Adam. This could be my new chill out game. Like, there's it's very much a, a world that I like inhabiting. Um, I like. Would I rather play Death Stranding or No Man's Sky to chill out today? I think Death Stranding. It's it's got the newness and it would absolutely keep me chill for most gameplay segments, right? Mm-hmm. There, and then there the rain happens. Yeah, there there are those things which are which are really um, uh, really stressful, uh, you know, and it it fits its point just fine. But for a lot of the game, you know, you're walking around and enjoying the scenery and trying not to lose your footing, and I'm good with that being my chill game for a while. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah, definitely not for That's everybody, sad. but some people will really like it. It's cool. Mm. It's at least I, it's I at least unique. It. I will give it. Um, I still got to get to the fucking Last of Us too. I feel oh, bad. Have I haven't to. done that I, yet. I want but... to talk to you about that game, and it's probably going to make me angry talking to you about that game. But I want to talk to you about that game. <laughs> there's there's two games on my list right now, and that one is top, and then this is probably the second one right now. Okay. But they, I think so the Last of Us two and Death Stranding could not be more different in tone. I am just warning you right now: do not use the Last of Us two as your chill out game unless you are completely like. Fucked. <laughs> well, I can chill out with that shit. <laughs> no, no human. If you can chill out, out with that game, out. then you're missing the point of that game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, or I just like, it doesn't bother me. I'll put on some lo-fi beats, just chillax, don't play through. No, oh I'm my god! I'm Please, I, that. I know that would ruin the experience. I ain't about to do that. There's a lot of games I turn music off for. Those type of games are not one of them. Plus, the soundtrack in Last of Us 2 is too good to not listen to it. Mm-hmm. Well, and those type of games also leverage the music for um, situations. So I feel that missing that would remove impact out of certain situations. Omni so, asks if we like The Last of Us 2 a bit. He's heard mixed things. Um, I, the release of that game was weird. There were a lot of spoilers that uh, people saw out of context early on that made them hate it. And I think a lot of people went into it expecting to hate it and then hated it because of confirmation bias <laughs> so, I, um, but yeah. but it is a game that probably i don't want to say too much but um i think it went a direction a lot of people didn't expect and didn't mm. want but i think it is a fantastic game fantastic story um i absolutely loved it i unfortunately didn't get to play it because i don't have a ps4 but i watched a full playthrough uh including the gameplay segments i didn't just watch one of those like cutscene. uh you know, stitch together cutscene movie versions because that misses a lot of the game and then a lot of the the dialogue in the game while you're doing gameplay is really where a lot of the world building and story is. So yeah. but I did watch one of my like favorite an moments playthrough. One of my favorite moments in the first Last of Us is the truck scene. When you're trying to start the truck. And the first I one? love that scene. Yeah. Yeah. And that is a hundred percent in game gameplay. And there's mm-hmm. some fun um, character building that goes on in that environment. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I'll say this about The Last of Us 2, because I did play the first uh, four hours of the game um, and then watched and read and did a whole bunch of spoilery for myself stuff um, just because I knew I wasn't going to play it. 
Mm -hmm. The Last of Us 2, I will say, is a good game. I'm not going to claim it's the best game in the world or that the story is going to work for everyone. I am going to claim that 2020 was literally the worst possible year to release something like it. Uh, because it is it is heavy, it is hard, it is not happy whatsoever. And, you know, currently my my place in the world and my state in the world, I don't need The Last of Us 2 right now. The world <laughs> is kind of depressing enough to me as it is. I don't need anything adding on top of that. So mm -hmm. will I go back and play it again? Yeah, but the world is going to look like a very different place when I play through this game. So, uh, yeah, just... If if you are personally having a hard time with the state of the world or where you're at in it, do mm -hmm. not play The Last of Us 2. It's not going to do you any favors. You can sit it on a shelf and wait for it, and I'll play it again later. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just um, need to do it. Like, that needs to be my goal for this week, mm -hmm. is neglect Rocket League, neglect DFT, download the damn game and get it going. I just need to finish that. Or start it and finish it for sure but either way uh we got some news to get to fellas yeah let's we get to the news we're running a little long tonight that was, that was, it's been a pretty good conversation but holy shit a little long <laughs> well we had oh my this god yeah we're almost a two game yeah yeah i guess we, we, we did talk about death training we did a lot of death training talk that might have been a little long-winded sorry everybody <laughs> no, no sorry you. that's what we're here for i know but anyway still how dare you give them content? <laughs> but anyway, uh, some news. Uh, also, Death Stranding related. Go figure. Oh, uh, yes. We're not done yet, one, idiots. We're not done with it. No. Um, <laughs> one day after Death Stranding's out, Valve gets it running on Linux. Yep. Uh, Valve Which, has been putting out a lot of stuff with Proton and the open source uh, project to get Windows games running on Linux. And they said, hey, Death Stranding looks kind of easy. Oh, shit, it works. All yeah. right, here you go. We're, we're releasing a patch. So, uh, yeah, if you if you have a Linux gaming computer, all three of you out there, um, then, Somebody yeah, you can run Death one. Stranding on it. I mean... Talk that one I, up as a win. I want to know exactly what percentage of <laughs> Death Stranding players played on a PC with Linux. So, for that, I can't tell you. But I can say that Steam V... Or Steam VR... That Steam's uh, Linux numbers usually represent about one to two percent of the total Steam population. That's so it's honestly not much, higher but than it's, I would have expected. Honestly, yeah, it's yeah, one same. to two percent. So you know, okay, but if you're saying on population. Technically, I or I was in that population. This I never is, this played. Is current. This is continuous population. This isn't is like this... total aggregate over the lifetime of Steam. This is like monthly actives. But how many of those people are counted on two different? Because like you're probably on both. Right I'm now, not. I don't have I don't have Steam installed on my Linux systems. Oh, okay. Because I'm just saying, like, there's probably a lot to do. Yeah. Like you used to. You used to have, and every once in a while you'd bitch because for payday you'd have to switch over to Windows. Yep. <laughs> I forgot about that oh, shit. Yeah. Oh man, the days. Yeah, we can't uh, endlessly berate you over using Linux all the time anymore. It's been yeah, I, I know. So I didn't. Fun. I knew now something can... was missing and I couldn't place it. And now I know what it was. That's what's <laughs> yeah, been it's, missing it's the whole shifted. time. It's the yeah. first brand type operating system for sure. Yeah. God damn it! If we can't bitch about him using Linux anymore. Now we can bitch at him for using Parsec. Use Parsec, yeah. Yes. Once again, Tom just can't make it easy. He no, has, God, to, make no. he has to be the outlier in use cases. I have always. a Dark Souls lifestyle, man. <laughs> Come on. You're a fucking gaming hipster. Of, and Dobby says the new Dark Souls. Okay. That's what Death Stranding is going to be, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Um, it makes it more accessible. More people that can play it, the better. That's rad. Woohoo. Uh, Far Cry 6 world premiere. Far Cry doesn't get me going at all i don't know no it's whatever i, I like so, far cry 3 for a few hours i guess far Back cry the 6 the the biggest thing is hey guys we brought a we brought a character from breaking bad but it has to be legally distinct because we can't use breaking bad's ip i hope you like breaking bad because the mm. guy's in far cry now go have fun <laughs> well they That's did something weird with five. well not with five but the continuation of five they did some weird shit i mean now we talk about Far Cry like it's not interesting at all, which for us probably not, not so much. But I mean, a lot of people really liked the last Far Cry game. Oh yeah, I had, I had a lot of they're cool sandboxes. I chunk them in with just cause. I so it is 
generic Ubisoft open world game number seven, along with Assassin's Creed and everything else they put out. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say generic. And also that's you talking, but I mean, the new Assassin's Creed's are different. New I'm Assassin's Creed's are pretty I'm tight. just saying. Black but Flag was the, the last Assassin's Creed I actually found any enjoyment with. The rest of them were... He, we're going to give you an open world map and just sneeze fucking icons all over it. Go have fun. Did you play all of I've them? I've heard now? that ch changed with Origin. Because mm -hmm. it's yeah. effectively the revamp of Assassin's Creed. I played Assassin's Creed 1, I played 2, and then I think I skipped until Black Flag because everything just got super generic. But I haven't played anything But all recently. the games since then, yeah, I think they've done some changes. Not that, you know, I don't know if it's still a generic AAA game. There's plenty of those. The but... new ones were very acclaimed. I know. Was it, was it Odyssey? Odyssey is the most was, recent. I, th I thought I heard. I like thought Odyssey. I saw a lot of good things about that. And now they're doing the Vikings, Ooh. which is cool. Which it's less but, Assassin's Creed and more. What kind of world can we put this sandbox in today? It's not about assassinating or stealthing or anything like that. Like it honestly, it lost what it was and are, became. Are you, are you sure it's still like that, or are you just saying that off of what you felt with? black flag no no that's that's one thing that people have been saying about assassin's creed since not not like the most recent game but even the one before that it's less assassination and what the game was and more open world sandbox where you know you're getting some type of power that the series has seen before right like climbing on shit and you can stealth around and duck in tall grass because that's what we do I've been meaning to try it because I've heard really good things about Origin. And at this point, it's probably pretty fucking cheap. Mm. Every game needs a tall grass mechanic, though. <laughs> I like. But, I mean... <laughs> I appreciate uh, what it is, which is, how do we make a stealth game in an open world where there's no walls to hide behind and 90-degree angles aren't really a thing? And they're yeah. like, oh, a tall grass. But now yeah, it's... it's tall grass. Every, every game that came out after fucking Horizon Zero Dawn is... Mm -hmm. Tall grass on a crouch. You just I mean, crouch the tall grass. The Last of Us Two, Death Stranding. Yeah. Tall grass. Crouch the tall grass. That's what you got to do. It's the tall game. Grass, Crouching tall grass number three, coming to a PlayStation near you. I got to the tall grass. I got to a tall grass segment in uh, Death Stranding, and it said on the tooltips on the right side, uh, tall grass can be used for you know stealth through areas but be careful if you have too much cargo stacked too high on your back people will be able to see you and i'm sitting there in the tall grass and the cargo on my back is literally <laughs> 10 feet above my head <laughs> like, just this comical thing it's like oh yeah that's like i work is it just sticking out it, it, it makes you feel of the uh, cardboard box yeah it really makes you feel like batman <laughs> but you brought number three which yes. is a good segue that i'm 60 seconds too late on halo three on pc finally hey yep that's and the one you were um, most anticipating isn't it Irk? yeah uh, and forge is in there now everything so i mean they've they've made the changes i've been needing and i want to get into there and play around with forge some but yeah halo 3 is out i'm going to be running through that campaign anyone that's wanting to uh hit me up because i loved halo 3's campaign i'll play it's probably my it is my favorite of the halo campaigns i can't remember if i played all the way through three three's campaign i didn't I specifically did not. I, I remember playing Reach all the way through. I remember playing Halo 2 all the way through. So Halo but 2 got kind of I... corridory. 2 got corridory with its uh, missions. 3, yeah, if you start feeling like very corridory, but then all of a sudden like you'll get big open fucking mission areas where there's a lot of fucking ground to do shit on, which the is very that, reminiscent of 1. The thing that frustrated me about 3, and I actually talked about this very long ago when it first came out on the podcast, um, is that it was simultaneously the most beautiful and the most ugly game I had ever seen, depending on which level I was in. There were some levels that it was incredible, it was beautiful, and other levels where the texture size was like 16 by 16, blown up to giant geometry, and then just bleeding bloom everywhere, and that was the whole fucking level was just ugly mud textures and blue. So the, the textures were bad, but because of what they've set the precedence for in Halo 1, mm. there is a certain tone that has to be done when you're dealing with Forerunner technology. 
And that gets super bland and generic. This, but really it, wasn't, quick. it wasn't the forerunner stuff. It was literally like rocks and trees where it, somebody just took like MS paint and they're just like brown. And that was a tree <laughs> trunk. That was the whole texture. See, I didn't think it was that bad. I, it was bad enough that it took me out of the experience. And then the story stuff they were doing, it didn't gel with me. And then I just quit. Mm. But that, that's me in Halo in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah, I really dug the story. But either way, it's out. It's there. Check it out. Dobby um, says Reach had the best ending. Agreed. Reach's ending was epic. I yes. love Reach's ending. Literally Reach. unbeatable in the Halo franchise. Uh, Reach's ending is probably one of my favorite endings of any first-person campaign. Yeah. yeah. Like, agreed. that was a super well done Really ending. well done. Loved it. You knew what was happening, but for some reason, it was still impactful. Like, if you had read the Reach books like I had, you knew the story. Mm -hmm. There are no surprises here. And it was still a really impactful emotional moment, and they sold it well. Well, and the best thing is, like, they gave you things to survive. Like, it wasn't inevitable right away. You yeah. could, yeah. there were, I don't know if you guys, how far you vary from the where they start you. There were structures with weapon caches and health yeah. throughout that area. It was really well done. I wonder what the record is for the longest time spent in that segment. Oh, man. That's got to be crazy. You know, you know, I knew from the very first time I played that, I'm like, oh, people are going to be seeing how long they can last here. That's going to yeah. be a thing. He survived for a while and was getting mad it wasn't ending. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stories. It's, that's, actually, um, um, that's a really nice part. It's a really nice game that didn't have Ludo narrative dissonance. Uh, to use the the catchphrase of game designers everywhere, mm -hmm. where like, hey, look, you beat the boss. Oh, but he killed you in the final cutscene, and now it's the end of the game. Like, it didn't have that shit. It was, I held on for this long. These things happened. Oh, fuck, that was actually supposed to happen in part of the story, and it matched the gameplay perfectly. Mm -hmm. I was, was great. there. I was trying to buy time. I bought time. Yeah. It was great. It was fantastic. I love and that, Halo Reach. And that was in the era of the Halo Wars where they actually lined the lore up. Like one thing the Halo yeah. franchise has done well is their fucking lore. They match it up with the games, the books, everything. It is very tightly in sync. Yeah. Dobby called out the nuke in COD 4. Yeah. Modern Warfare was a fantastic game. I loved Modern Warfare. I didn't like any Call of Duty really after that. Like 2 was fine, but nothing really hit that peak for me. And I was an old school Call of Duty fan. Yeah, so um, Halo 3 is there. Go play it. It's good yeah. shit. Yay, Halo 3. Especially really if you've got shit. Xbox Game Relive Pass, your childhood. that shit is free. Or if you paid for $40 for Master Chief Collection, you get all the Halos that are coming there. Yep. For free. 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 Um, the best price. So, damn it, guys. What? We are fucking awful. Why do we put our news in the way we do? I God damn it. Why do we do that? We are going to be so down or getting out of here tonight. Uh, um, Ubisoft let go of three more employees and their sexual scandal stuff. Um, one of them being a very big hitter that they've effectively said is a guy that green lights and red lights games. Hmm. So this guy has top most creative control and he is now gone from the company because of this. Yep. No, no one is being spared as no one should. Just calling out that Ubisoft is still doing housekeeping from their scandal. Oof. Which is good. They they are reacting to this in the way that I thought they would. Right? We yeah. we cannot blame them for, for cleaning house of people who need to be cleaned. <laughs> I yeah, I I don't yeah. want to say what I'm gonna say, so I'm gonna hold off, but I like Ubisoft. Um this is a black mark on them for sure. Granted, big companies this big, you can't control all your employees. But yeah. they're doing what they can do, and that is cleaning house to people they know that are doing bad things. Mm -hmm. Yep. Either way, um, get on to our last bit of news. And for those of you around the community, you know, but we're going to go ahead and make a very public thing about it. Um, so we have officially parted ways with Lion Blaze on our Rocket League team. He uh, jumped into a tournament with the guys from Omelette uh, two weeks ago. They did really well. They decided, you know what? This shit's flowing really great. Let's stick with it. So Lion is with the boys over um, Omelette. Mm -hmm. um, nothing but love for that guy. 
Uh, yeah. Lion has done great things under the 72 PC banner. The dude is family. He will always be family. No bad blood at all over this departure. Absolutely we only not. wish success for Lion Blaze and Omla in the future. We love Lion to death. Um, and I mean, it it sucks, right? It really, it, yeah. it really fucking sucks. It hurts to to lose, you know, the one of the longest standing players on our team. Um, but it's esports, man. This stuff happens. People move yep. to different teams, and there's no bad blood. We wish we wish Lion all the best, and we will watch your career with great interest. I hope nothing but but good things for your future, and. Man, I hope you still come out and hang with us because uh, sure, playing yeah. golf with your friends with Lion Blaze and Cobb was some of the best shit ever <laughs> at 72 Pin Connector. Uh, so don't be a stranger, man. Come hang out. And as sure. far as us as esports, uh, we're still in flux. Uh, we will be as transparent as possible on this and we'll keep everyone informed with whatever happens with us on the yeah. following in the following weeks. So stuff keep is, an eye on our... Stuff is happening really fast and then like like other reverse stuff that has changed stuff happens like an hour later. And I don't want to like inundate the community with, Oh wait, no, this thing happened. Oh fuck. These, this guy said this, Oh shit. Well, we're, we're looking at this person. Like we don't want to say anything until stuff is solid. So bear with us. Mm -hmm. It will happen. It's just going to take longer than you're comfortable with and fairly longer than the rest of us are comfortable <laughs> with too. I wish we had like an easy answer. Like, I know. Oh, it's cool. Yeah. I'm playing on the team. We're good. Um, yeah, if if uh, you guys are cool with uh, with winning, I'll be there. But uh, it's not really that easy. So once we get stuff figured out, we'll let everyone else know. Mm -hmm. Yep. Lion, good luck to you, buddy. Yeah, Hope you win luck. every match except for when you're playing us. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice way to say that. Yeah. And uh, that said, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all we got for tonight's cast. That's it. I think so. So if you're on our Twitch right now. Thank you. We love you guys. Um, we post all this stuff also on YouTube. So if you miss a live stream, you can always go over to our YouTube, which is 72 Pin Connector, and uh, find all of our podcasts there. As well as people were like, dude, it's been two hours. Why in the fuck am I going to sit around and watch these guys talk for two hours? We got you. We clip out good segments, and we throw them on our YouTube. Um, normally, probably in the five-minute range. So Even, even more, though the Death Stranding one is going to be 35 fucking minutes. No, I'm going to chop that into smaller ones. We're not doing a big blob. <laughs> Fuck that. Um, so get over to our YouTube. If you're on our YouTube, we do this thing live 9 p.m. Eastern Standard, 6 p.m. Pacific on Twitch, which is twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector. Um, you can jump in there, get in the conversation. You probably heard us talking about people or talking to people in the chat as well as people can snipe our games. Tonight was a little weird, but you can jump in the lobby, play with us. It's a good time um if any platform you listen to us you can always get our audio through things like stitcher uh google play itunes Pi google play was it we're Pi all over the place catcher or something um cat yeah whatever Stitch wherever you like Pocket i think cast. the only one we're not on is um spotify uh, spotify. We're not on spotify. spotify does weird stuff yep um and then yeah that's pretty much it we have a website if that was too much go to 72 pinconnector.com links you Every everywhere everything's there well, or follow our Twitter, 72PC underscore official. And we pretty much tweet out most the important shit that we have and our plays of the day. You make rad play, drop it in our Discord. It's all good. So with that, I think that's all we got for you guys this week. I think that's Anyone it. Anyone got any parting words? Um, um, 72 Pin Connector is the first strand type podcast. <laughs> I was going to say it. that. You took the words <laughs> yes. out of my mouth. Yes, I got it. <laughs> all right. That's a good one to leave on. Bye, everybody. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Game on. <laughs>